and remain standing for a moment of silence for our servicemen overseas. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. All right. Apologize for uh, an executive session where we were discussing legal things for the township. So that's why we started a bit late. And apologize. One minute for that. Okay. And the first thing I have to read is the Whitehall Township has an oblig obligation to affirmatively further fair housing and to review all land use applications in accordance with federal civil rights statutes. This includes taking meaningful actions that overcome patterns of segregation and foster inclusive communities free of barriers that restrict access to opportunity based on protected characteristics. The township in its land use decisions does not discriminate against persons based on color, race, national origin, religion, sex, disability, or familial status, and reviews all land use applications in accordance with federal civil rights statutes. Public comments made on this basis of bias and stereotype concerning people within these protected classes will not be taken into consideration by the township in its deliberations. Okay, and the first thing we have is the approval of our minutes from the regular meeting of January 8th. Do I have a motion? I'll make that, that motion. Warren. Okay. Box seconds. I'm now pull the board. Warren, aye. Fox? Aye. Commissioner Snyder? Aye. Commissioner Sloniker? Aye. Present. Motion Pat carries four ayes, zero nays. Now, now we're waiting because our attorney has now <laughs> asked for another moment. So talk freely amongst yourselves. Have a nice night. Yeah. <laughs> No, he said just a couple of minutes. Yeah. Okay. 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 First uh, motion of business here is a motion approving the appointment of to the Whitehall Township Board of Commissioners, term ending December thirty first, two thousand five. Do I have a motion? And who would that be? I would make a motion. For Robert Pelegian. Do I have a second? I'll second it. Okay. Uh, now we'll. Mr. Secretary, can you poll the board? Sure. Commissioner Snyder? Yes. Commissioner Sloniker? Aye. Commissioner Fox? Commissioner Warren, nay. Okay. Now, and this is what we were in executive session for, as we are aware. I will again ask for the same motion with, uh, with either the same name or an other names being considered. Do I, I make the motion for Michael Kuka? Okay. Do I have a second? I have a second. Okay, with no second, that doesn't go any further. Now, I will once again ask for the first uh, motion for Mr. Pelegian as the uh, reference by Mr. It was originally asked by Mr. Commissioner Sider. Do I have a motion? Can we, can we suspend the rules and complete this at the end of the meeting? We can do that according to what we've been told. 
But we were going to do three votes no matter well, what. And, it, and that's what I want to okay. do. Okay. But, I mean, saying. we can – it's really – the way I see it right now, there isn't going to be another person or whatnot. And we can do the whole voting again at the end of the meeting. So. Well, you, it's a suspension. You, you did call for a motion, I guess. Okay. Uh, I'll, I'll, okay. I'll, I, 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 did, I, I asked if there was a motion. Yep. Okay. But, okay, so I, I go ahead and recall that, whatever verbiage I used to get to that point. Well, I would like to make a motion as we agreed to in the back we didn't agree. Well, we, we discussed. <laughs> we discussed. The, the, I should say the procedure. So, we're yeah, trying to figure out the procedure. President Sloniker, you asked if there was a motion. I would suggest you just go through at least a third motion. And okay. Then if you and, okay. And is there is there a motion then for the third time for the appointment of blank to the Whitehall Township Board of Commissioners term ending December thirty first, two thousand twenty five? I, I would, would like to make the motion for Ron Scholler. Can I do that? Yes, you can. And according to what we've been told. Second. Second. Is there a question period? We we first have to go see what we're going to vote on the thing. I mean, I mean, you. Oh, you might want to ask him procedurally. No. No. Um, well, maybe that's the case. I don't know. Um, Attorney Gross. A name has been presented that we have not seen or know anything about or interviewed. So the question is, how can I vote on something that I don't know anything about? That's up to you. I'm not. <coughs> it's up to you whether you feel you can vote that way. There is not an so opportunity. So there's no procedures. You can nominate anybody you want. Anyone who is qualified. Is this so how do we know this person's qualified? Because if I would vote so yes, I don't know that. Well, I, I don't know that. I'm not trying to be disrespectful. No, no, I understand. I'm, I'm, if you voted for, and, and I wasn't, uh, if you voted and he's over 21. And those are those qualifications. Appointed, and he was not qualified, he couldn't be seated. Larissa, Larissa provided so that information. Can I, can oh, I yeah. speak halfway, halfway freely here? <clears throat> The procedure that we started with, since it's the first time for me, there was a total of four applicants that submitted paperwork. Two of those applicants did not show up at all for the meeting that we had the interviews. Two applicants did show up, and those applicants were a gentleman by the name of Coca and a gentleman by uh, Plegian. They were both qualified to sit in the seat. We can make our decisions whether one is more qualified than the other, but they meet the basic requirements of being a township resident, et cetera, et cetera. If you review their applications tonight and look at those, and if I could talk about them, I will. If I'm not allowed to, I will not. But am I allowed to talk about the applications? I would prefer that we do that at the end of the meeting where I wanted to spend it. The, prob the problem I have is that we're asking to vote on somebody who I know nothing about, no discussion, don't know if they qualified, no formal application, oh, zero. There, I'm sorry, you did receive a formal application. That's how his name got on the list. So you mean the one that didn't show up? Yeah, I mean, you, you just said, you made a statement that was incorrect. That's well, No, uh, okay, I, and I'm, you know, I could be corrected if that's the case, but I don't have it because I threw it away, is what happened. So, so there, um, there was a motion. There was a second. Okay. There certainly should be an opportunity for discussion before a vote, and that discussion could be by you, Commissioner Snyder, Com Commissioner Warren, Commissioner Fox, by, by any of you. You're entitled to ask questions. Of um, our fellow commissioners. Of, uh, you're entitled to make comments. You're, you're entitled to say whatever you want regarding this motion before you vote on it. Um, it, it's just like you were voting on any other thing in here. Honest to God, it, it, sure, it's different because we're talking about a person rather than a project somewhere, but it's the same thing. You the get same, to, it's the same you legal process. Speak. Yeah, but I'm speaking for myself. Yep. Not to give everybody a rough time. A, four people, two didn't show up, two were, did nothing in the township, no committees, no nothing. 
we have one person who's been involved in the township for 25 years, and we have another person who's done absolutely nothing in the township, and the third name shows up and you don't show up, the natural question I would ask is, why would Commissioner Warren request that this person be put up as a name? He has the right to put up anybody's name. And I know what I, you're saying about I you agree. don't have the qualifications, but we on his application, so, uh, so and then I have he, that in here, he does, he does have all those qualifications. I can't certify that they're all truthful. Well, but if you put them on the application, I would assume they're truthful. Yeah. So, but I could ask Mr. Warren to explain his justification for this particular person as being presented as a nominee. Is that correct? He, and he can answer that, but he doesn't have to answer that. That's okay. It, it, what we've been told, anybody that has the requirements is allowed. I'm, to perfect, I'm perfectly fine, but I would like Commissioner Warren based on the four people who were applicants, okay, and we know the two never showed up for the interview. We know that one did not participate anything in the township at all, and we know that one has 25 years of experience and has participated on a very regular basis. So logically, the question I would ask is, of Mr. Commissioner Warren, please explain to me why you would want my vote for the man that you're requesting a nomination for. And if you can justify that, I would maybe change my mind. I'll, um, I'll simply state that. I know the gentleman. He ran for magisterial district judge. Mm -hmm. He's a former retired South Whitehall police officer. Um, he has a handle on municipal, a lot of mis municipal issues. Um, I know him from his campaign literature. I paid attention to when he ran. Um, I read his application. I like his application. I know a little bit about where... Copy it. I threw mine out because that's, please, thank you. I know a little bit about where he stands on the future of Whitehall Township, and that's where I'm leaning my vote. The future and not things that we can't change. I want Whitehall Township to be a municipality where my kids would want to live. When, I, when I'm challenged, when, when, when we're challenged, not, how many townships are challenged to, to go against preserving open space? I think that's something that we did that was noble in this township. It was harder than it had to be. And I'm just looking at our park system, somebody who used the park system, who appreciates the park system, who will put their faith and effort behind the park system. That's, that's where, I, where I'm standing. So your deciding point is the fact that out of the group that we talked to, the fact that Mr. Schaller would support open space is critical to you. He would be amenable to it. So the I don't know exactly how he will vote. Oh, that's okay. So the problem that I'm having is that I never had the opportunity to know if that's a correct statement or an incorrect statement. And the fact of the matter is that I don't even know if he's here tonight because I don't know the man. The fact of the matter is he never showed up for an interview. Now, in my practice of doing business, if you don't at least show up for the interview, that sends to me a message that says you're not interested in the job. That's number one. Number two, I'm not disagreeing that you may feel he's that way, which is fine, but during the interviewing process, I did not have the opportunity to vent his true opinions of what it is open space or not. And I do know that open space is an important part to you, but in my opinion, it's only one small part of the business that we do in the township. The fact that when I'm reviewing his application, he has nothing that he's done in the recreation arrangement. He's never coached a team in this township. He's never been on a board. He's been absolutely nowhere to be seen. And the end result is next to the commission, next to the mayor and the deputy mayor sits this board. And I don't know how I can even, and this is my vote based on the arrangements, I don't know how I or any other commissioner, to be honest, could approach to say yes when you have two other people who took the time and effort to show up, number one, and the qualifications of one of them are there. And we could debate the qualifications between the two, but the fact that this was even a nominee kind of flabbergasted me and caught me a little off guard tonight. I, I think, think if he implied that the, well, I'm not gonna speak for him, I cannot do Well, I, I guess, you, you, well, you did speak for him tonight because you thought that he was pro-open um, space. I think, I think he was, 
I'm, and I, yeah. and I, I would appreciate if you don't speak for him because we haven't had the opportunity to talk to, for, uh, to this person, and the end result is I look at it as a blank piece of paper with credentials because he never had the opportunity to answer any one of our questions. And we all interviewed each one of the candidates in detail one night, and that's why I totally disagree, in my opinion, for the vote. But on your side of the table, that's why I'm asking that you support it. My next question is, Commissioner Fox, why are you supporting this person? I've read his history. Like you said, I've, I've seen him run. Um, he has a background with kids also. He has a... I don't have my paperwork with me. Um, no, you can have Kind of like passing it around. <clears throat> I've, I've read and understand what he stands for. Um, also, I look at the fact that... Big asset to the township with everything that. Is it on his application? He's a first responder. Yes, he is. He's a police officer, so he's a first responder. Oh, in, in another township. But he's still a police officer, I understand first that. responder. I, I interpret and he also, the you know, he has a background. He served in the U.S. Air Force, also. So he okay. has. He has. You know, the background of working within community and townships. Mr. Pelagian, you're lipping something to me. Would you care to share with the public? I have, a, I have the floor. So, excuse, excuse me. Excuse me. President, President. I'm sorry. I, I have the floor. And that's just my personal opinion. So, the reason I'm asking this, I think that if we're going to vote for this important position, that everybody should be able to justify their own answer individually. I'm not going to try to sway you one way or the other, but I do think that the public sits here should know exactly the, what we're up against and how we vote and what our values are. And if your values are different to mine and you want to vote that way, you're more than welcome to do so, but I want you to express publicly why you voted what you did and why you did. And I just did. And I accept that as your answer. And the same thing I accepted as Jeff's answer as well. Thank you. We had an impasse. I, f I figured I'd try for the third candidate. That I know something about, maybe you, I, I, I would have hoped you would have known. I don't know anything about right. him. Are, are we done with the questions on I am. this person? Okay. Now, oh, and I'm sorry, the, the public, anybody with questions on this subject? You know the, the routine, name, you know address, the routine. and <laughs> no more than three minutes. Lorianne Fainel, out of the 3107 North 3rd Street. Last week I attended and listened in onto both candidates that were presented before all of you. And in my personal opinion, the best candidate, and this is my personal opinion only, is Mr. Pelagian. He has the knowledge, the wisdom, and the experience this township needs. He interviewed in person, and I think that's important. And Mr. Cook also, you know, interviewed. There was very, what I call a very difference of stance when I listened to Mr. Coca, Mr. Pelagian. There was things I did not like that Mr. Coca said that I thought were almost kind of offensive, at least one of his comments. Uh, Mr. Pelagian was very calm-tempered when he was questioned by Jeff Warren. Um, his temper remained calm, and he did not yell, and he was well-based. I mean, honestly, Ron Schaller should not be even considered to be here. If he couldn't come to that meeting in person for his interview, he should have been even nominated. He didn't come last week, and he's not here today. So you know what? He does not want to represent his community properly. Otherwise, he would have been there last meeting, and he would have been here this meeting. Thank you for letting me speak. Next. Name and address. Hi, Deb Rosine, 4408 North Church Street. Um, I'm just a little concerned because there are two other commissioners that aren't here, and we're trying to vote on this. It's, so I, I oh, personally again that's why we were a little bit delayed in coming out here because we're down to commissioners right. i i think that all commissioners should be present for the vote and we don't have that luxury considering that this has to be done in 45 days or sent down to lehigh county court so it and that's up on wednesday but so, there, there is something uh President Slunkard that the right, attorney's right. working on. Okay, but we'll, we'll get that. I want to hear the more of the comments from the, okay. the audience, please. Yes, please. Okay. How are you doing? How are you doing? 
Uh, Andrea Hoagland, 51 Kimmet Avenue. Um, this coca is, if, okay. I had an issue with a coca that worked here. Um, and he said the hiring practices here is generational and legacy, okay? Um, him and the mayor, we never, all three of us never been on the same phone conversations and they both told me the same thing. Not this same is legacy person. hire. Ken I, Ken, I love how you come in after everybody with the questions and stuff, because I love that, because we didn't have that transparency before. But, but Ken, the last meeting I was at, you talked about an engineer 36 years on the job, still in the job, and you already want to replace him with somebody as if you already had somebody to replace him. That's what made me nervous about this generational hiring. Um, I was told by uh, Tony he wanted to segregate the parks. Okay, he said that he could, he knew there was Allentown people playing at the parks and he took down the backboards, he um, dismantled this park and all that. So I don't think if this person, Coca, is related, it falls far from the tree. Um, the, the mindset was, it's like, um, he said, it's nothing that I could do, I had no authority. So he has, he's on a power trip. Again, if this person, Mike, is related to him, why are we going to get anything different when Tony and the mayor, the last mayor, not you, uh, said that, again, generational hiring legacy, and there will be nothing, no consequences to our actions. And they both proved it. The mayor had three whistleblowers, three whistleblowers, and nobody fired him. Nobody in leadership came and fired that man. That was our second lawsuit with that guy. But three people coming against you with personal allegations, and we paid 140000 So again, who, Mike, if he's related to those, those two gentlemen or if he has any connection with them, he is definitely not a good hire for us because, again, they assured me the legacy, it was a mind thing. It was, you know, uh, we've been doing this for generations. We'll continue to do it. And so, again, if he's related, that's probably going to be the... You know, and, and again, um, I don't know the, the other people involved here, but I do agree with you. If you can't even come for the interview, you shouldn't even be considered. Um, and please mm. stop saying because somebody has a job, because you can be a, 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 a police officer and not do the job properly. You can be mm. a lawyer. You can be a mayor, okay? These are individual human beings, and I like the way you all looked at their, what they're putting there. I understand. But again... Everybody has a job because they need housing, they need food, they need whatever. It doesn't make them good or honorable people. I found that out dealing with this township, and it's shameful. Because somebody should have fired that mayor, and I never should have had to experience and go through all the crap I went through. Because, again, leadership let us down. So let's not get more leaders like that. And I know I get three minutes, y'all get three hours. I got it. Give you a little bit more. I know you did. Thank Come you, up. sir. Thank you for that. No, behind you. Name and address. <clears throat> Anthony Kopak, 3763 Dogwood Drive. I'll second the first speaker that all the commissioners sh should be present for such an important vote as this. This, this. this is just something that fell out of the sky like snow. You knew if Mr. Marks uh, who's going to be the next mayor, you're going to have a seat to fill. You should have had planned for this ahead of time, or, we, or you could have had a special we, meeting. Sir, sir, we did plan for this ahead well, of time. It doesn't sound like it. You're up against No, the and again, that's exactly what this meeting's supposed to be about, that we have two commissioners that couldn't make it. Well, they did not in any way go ahead and say, hey, I'm not going to be able to make that day or whatever. So we're left with what we can do. And again, we went ahead, talked to the attorney of what we can do. If we cannot come to anything tonight, this will be referred down to the Court of Common Pleas in Lehigh County, and they'll appoint somebody with whether they have to interview somebody or not. It'll be dependent upon which judge we get. Well, then that, that, that's maybe what should happen. And, and when did these interviews take place? Last week? At the Board of Commissioners at, meeting? Yeah. And what at, time did that meeting start? At the workshop meeting. At the workshop meeting? What time did that meeting start? Well, they were different times for different people. I honestly... These were advertised. They were open for the public? Yes. Yes. yes we're oh. required under the Sunshine Law. So I, I don't know how you feel about coming out and interviewing for a job when there's a panel of everybody and 
You know, they uh, want to do that, everything. That, but that, that, that's neither here or there because I'm oh, not interviewing for a job. Yeah. But okay. uh, on the white whole news section here, it says last week the meeting started at 8 p.m. I have no idea what you're talking it, about. It, it, oh, right on your website. It said the meeting last, last week started at 8 p.m. Well, that's incorrect, like so many things on the social web. No, but that's your website. I, I, I'm just saying, we did uh, not this start This isn't Facebook, this is your I, website. All I'm telling you is the meeting started at 7 o'clock. Well, it's the workshop meeting. And you interviewed meeting. people at, at 7. There are no workshop minutes. Six minutes or workshop. There, yeah, uh, the, uh, again, I have no, no clue where this that's is the coming January from. January meeting. Oh, that's February 5, 2024, Board of Commissioners workshop meeting. It says 8 p.m. it started. Sir, what happened on January? The 8 o'clock meeting was the commissioner's meeting. was delayed by one hour because, if I recall, the reorganization yes. meeting occurred and it had to be yes. an hour okay. later. And that's charter. scheduled for that and time. So what I'm you're sorry. reading is the minutes from the January meeting is what's on the website. We're in February, and in February... We had a series of meetings for interviews last week and yeah. a workshop of which it wasn't a recorded as an official meeting, but uh, we did have that. So you're probably mistaken, like I was one time thinking it was this month, and it's actually January's meeting, not February. Right, well, and the reorganizational so meeting always starts at that time. Yes. It, and February again, 5, I, right? I'm sorry it I was, was not thinking it about was. January because right, you brought well, up February. Either way, that's the way I feel everybody should okay. be present. Let it, let it roll where it rolls. Okay, thank you. Any others? Commissioner Fisher? Ex-Commissioner Fisher. Fisher. <laughs> We're just looking for some help. Fair enough. Chuck Fisher, 3234 Flat Rock Drive. Long-time listener, first-time speaker. <laughs> uh, my question is, what is the worst-case scenario? I have uh, two questions. What is the worst-case scenario? So I know we're talking about going to the Court of Common Pleas. What does that mean? And how will they, uh, if we can't recruit, how are they going to recruit? They, if they will use whatever mechanism that they want. We're, they're not required to do much except follow what our rules are for requirements. If we can't come to a decision tonight, that's where it's going to be referred to possibly. And again, we'll have more discussion at the end of the meeting because I don't want this to go on as long as it has, I'd rather get through with most of this. So some of the people that maybe want to leave will leave. That's yeah. all. I mean, I'm, I understand that uh, we're probably hemmed in on the 45-day limit. Is there any way to extend that whatsoever? Or is this you know, it? Not that I'm no. aware of, no. Okay. Uh, and my last thing, I guess, is more of a comment than anything else. But, you know, um, I think this goes to the uh, audience as well. You know, it's a hell of a job up there. Let's be honest, and let's, you know, sometimes ask a question why we don't have people clamoring and rushing to be up there. <laughs> so thank you guys for what you do. And maybe somebody consider. <laughs> That's all I have to say. Thank, thank you, me. Mr. Fisher. Next. President Sloniker. Yes. Um, so the public's aware the original intent was because we don't have some answers was to leave it to go to the end of the meeting so you could do yeah. your research yeah. but with all the all the residents here doing asking these questions they should just be aware that we do have to get some answers because before we can make a final decision that's why we elected to delay some of that right. so he may have that answer for us by the time we hit the end do you know what I'm trying to say do you want to explain what I'm trying to say right. go ahead So if the, com the commissioners have to vote for, four commissioners have to vote to approve a new commissioner. That's the way the charter works. If all four of those commissioners present don't vote for one person, no one is appointed to that position. Um, I was asked and, uh, to see whether this meeting could be temporarily adjourned to reconvene only for that issue um, if if for any one candidate doesn't get four votes so and you can we can you can okay you have to you have to um, announce it before the end of the meeting okay. when you're you're um, reconvening to 
that it is only for that issue and you have to give 24 hours published notice of that meeting. Um, I did, that's what I went to check on. We, we can't do that tomorrow, I mean, essentially. Um, the 45 days runs Wednesday, so it is possible to reconvene on Wednesday and be on the 45th day. Um, if, uh, but that's the only way to give the 24 hours additional notice of the reconvened meeting. And the notice that it used to be was the p paper of circulation. I that think. those requirements aren't in this section. No longer. It's, I mean, we would we discussed it briefly. I, I'll say that's why I went. <laughs> that's why I was out in the hallway discussing the various ways. Certainly, you would be announcing it at the public meeting. I see we have the press here who uh, might. Uh, be able to assist with that as well, and we would take any, we, we would publish it anywhere we could, since there's no specific requirement. We'd put it on the website, we'd post it on the building, we'd do what we could to tell people, and everyone here certainly would know when it was going to be reconvened too. That's the only, there is no way to, uh, to Mr. Fisher's uh, question, deadline can, cannot be extended if you haven't appointed somebody by the end of the 45th day. Um, the Lehigh County um, Court of Common Pleas end will decide. Of, and end of day is 5 o'clock business? Or, uh, this it is doesn't say. You know what I'm saying? Because it comes and, out. And right. Mr. Snyder, it doesn't say. Okay. I, mean, I, I, would, I would argue you get the full day, so 11.59 p.m., but I'm not sure that I, I can't tell you that, and I sitting here I'm not going to be able to research it. In, in speaking, I think, on behalf of the, myself, and maybe the commissioners would agree with this, we understand that if it's not a four- vote that we would have an issue and that's why we asked the solicitor to try to figure out if what our options would be and if president sloniker wants to delay that to the end so we can have a thorough discussion and get through the rest of our business i'm per perfectly fine with that but i think the audience has to know that that's going to be a thorough discussion of how we do what we're going to do whether we keep fighting for a 4-0 vote or whether it becomes postponed. We, we only have a choice of a 4-0 vote. That's so right. if we see that we're going and getting zero nowhere, yes. then we will go ahead and then possibly use the criteria that Attorney Gross has just mentioned and see what we can do with that, with getting this under the co time constraints for putting it off to some time tomorrow. <laughs> now, that, now that vote, so we're all clear, that doesn't have to be a 4-0 vote. That could be a it's, 3. It's, it, but it's going it, to, no, no, to extend. It's, it's, it's going to be a 4, it's going to be 4 commissioners. Thank you. And if there's 5 here, there still has to be 4, the way I understood it. Question. A, oh, a motion sorry. to sorry. adjourn the meeting, to reconvene at a, specific, to, at a separate time, can, can be a majority of those here it does not that does not need to be four okay. so if three of you want to adjourn to reconvene wednesday evening oh okay because that, okay, that would pass so yeah. 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 okay and again I, I i was not sure then okay thank you appreciate everybody's patience hey is it my turn <laughs> Yes, I, I'm sorry. We're trying to answer questions so that when you get up there that we don't have to answer them again. But please come up. Your name and address, please. Yes, Mr. Sloniker. Well, just, again, do it with everybody so to keep it going on the same way. My name is Joni Tedesco, 424 4th Street, Whitehall. I was just wondering, I realize that the vacancy that y'all are considering is due to the um, absence of... Mr. Fisher. No. No, no, no. 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 Due to the, the mayor over the mayor there. Oh, I'm sorry because yes. of Mayor Marks. Yes. Excuse me. I'm sorry. I stand corrected. Anyway, I see that Commissioner Atia is not here and uh, Commissioner Scafaro. Are those excused absences? Yes, they are. Okay, because that was never mentioned in the beginning of the meeting why they weren't here. And again... If somebody's having a medical issue, I, I'm just saying, I don't bring that up, and we've never gone before, and you can bring up all you want about the prior guy who was relieved of his duties. I'm just asking. Um, I'm not again, bringing up about no. him, Mr. Sloniker. What I'm asking is if they were excused. I don't care if it's medical or not. 
but it was not mentioned in the beginning. Mr. Atiyah was excused at the last meeting. He knew that he wouldn't be here. The other person, and again, they might have a medical problem that, you know, but that's what they asked. And then they're going to be excused, at least by me. What my question was is why was it not brought up in the beginning of the meeting that there was two that were not here that were excused absences? Because we've never done that before. We've only done that. Well, if that they're not here and they're supposed to okay. be here. You're right. You're absolutely right. Thank, Thank you. you. Go ahead, please. Name and address. Karen Pashefko, 3303 Musselman Court. Were um, Attorney Atia and Attorney, I'm sorry, um, Commissioner Atia and Commissioner Scafaro, were they involved in the interview process? Were they present uh, during uh, the interview? Commissioner Scafaro was, Commissioner Atia was not. Okay. So you, do you have any feel for no. how, no? I, I, I did not go out and do a, a polling or anything like that. I know, but. You talk I, and no, and, and, and I'm just telling you, because right. I had my own feelings on things, and I ask different questions than other people, and, you know, everybody comes up with something with how they feel. That's it. Thanks. <coughs> Mr. President, may I? Uh, my office was contacted by Mr. Scholler, and he withdrew his application, and he stated due to his work workload and schedule, he could not participate as Whitehall Township Commissioner. So I just wanted to clarify that. Okay. And he notified us. Okay. So because of that notification, how can he even be considered at this point? He, he because, because you can consider anybody until okay. we formally get them to say, no, I'm not going to do that. Well, he did. But no, I, I just this, was, this was before he was offered the position, which is different. If you're, if you're not sure... And then somebody says, no, you, you got this. And then they say, no, I don't want it. That's different than saying, no, nah, I don't want to go through any of this. Uh, and again, in my, in my work in personnel in different I, offices. I just find it very odd that any one of us can nominate anybody without talking to them, make sure they're on board, that person themselves, and then ask for a vote on that. And that's why I find it very odd. Mr. Snyder, that's because that's how the rules are. I'm we do not. Learn some and again, rules. you yes. have. And, and I know we all should have something where, yes, this should happen, this should happen, this should happen. What the rules are, generally, we do have that kind of contact, and that's where we are. But Mr. Sloniker, as a commissioner, we all have a fiduciary responsibility to represent the residents in good faith and in good judgment. And in good faith and good judgment on this particular situation, I don't think it's being done wisely, and I'll leave it till the end of the meeting from that point on. Well, and, Thank you. and that's why I wanted this kind of discussion to go on further, but I wanted to hear from the public. Sir? You're a sir now. Feels good. 32, 30, uh, Chuck Fisher, 32, 34, Flat Rock Drive. Is there any way, I think Attorney Gross alluded to, you can like temporarily adjourn the meeting? Is there a way that would uh, commissioners Atia and Scarfaro be available in the next 48 hours, or would there be an advertising deadline? Is there a way to get that fifth person up there in the next 48 hours? We're, uh, I'm making the assumption that at least one of them, meaning Mr. Atia, would probably be able to attend. I can't guarantee that because I didn't talk to him because we, we didn't think of this. I can't address the thing with... Commissioner Scarfaro. So theoretically, it's not going to run afoul of any advertising deadline. Sometime in the next 48 hours, you could all get together and revote on this? No. No. What, what I'm assuming is going to happen is at the time before adjournment, we will extend or open the meeting till I'm picking a time here, Wednesday, 7 o'clock, for the sole purpose of blank. And it may be that all four of us be the same people sitting here and we've got the same problem. Or there may be a different group of people but we would have the opportunity for the two commissioners who are unavailable tonight to at least be able to come, and we afforded them that opportunity. So. And that way, it would be a, um, 
unfortunately, sometimes schedules just get out of whack, and that's what happens. But I think that's what that would be our only option as the four of us to try to get through the uh, stalemate. So if the there is, a is stalemate. yes, yes, it can be done that way. It can. That's okay. Uh, if that's what we decide at the end of the meeting. Okay. So there is a way out of it. Yeah. Hopefully, I did talk to candidate Schuller. I mean, he said he would be interested. Um, so no, Jeff, Jeff, I'm not, not going to debate you. I, I, I have the floor. Gonna, I don't want to go through Mr. this. Mr. Snyder, I have the floor. Fine. I didn't interrupt you. Go ahead. Okay. So um, I think we just go through the vote. We we know where it's going to fall. I thought it was an option, given there was a stalemate on two candidates. You don't know the person. I do. Maybe Liz does too. Maybe Mr. Sloniker does or doesn't. But that's why I made the nomination. Okay. That's fine. Any further comments by the public at this time? If not, we're going to go. Oh, we start the vote on this. I'm yes. sorry. I forgot all about that. Okay. Uh, Mr. Secretary, poll the board. Commissioner, Commissioner Warren, board. aye. Commissioner Fox. This is for sure. This is Schaller. Commissioner Sloniker. No. Clinton. Clinton. Commissioner Snyder. No. Okay. Commissioner Sloniker. President Sloniker. Aye. 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 And again, so motion oh. failed. Right. Three one. Three one. Okay. All right. So now we're going to postpone this to the end of the meeting where we'll bring up discussion later on hopefully maybe it'll be resolved maybe we can get into things deeper than we have now so now we're going to go president Sonica, can i just uh, over here oh sorry. i'm sorry <laughs> i i i recommend here that you just have a motion to suspend your rules to oh, okay. to take the agenda out of order okay. and move this item to the end do I have a motion to take the uh, agenda voting on position of a commissioner to later on in the meeting at the end? I will make a motion to suspend the rules out of order and move this to the end of the meeting for further discussion. I'll second it, Warren. Secretary, please pull the board. Commissioner, Commissioner Snyder? Yes. Commissioner Warren? Aye. Commissioner Fox? Yes. President Sloniker? Aye. Motion carries four ayes, zero nays. Four, oh, we, we, we accomplished something. Okay. We're getting down to public hearing and voting on ordinances. Bill number 5 dash two zero. Sorry, President Sloniker, you didn't do the general courtesy of the floor. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I thought we were doing that since we had people. Okay. I, I, you have the, have the list. Clerk. Where did I put it? Um, just take your time. You'll find it. Andrea Hoagland. Please state your name and your address, please. Yes, sir. I'm sorry. I, I, that's my fault. I thought we were talking with the, the crowd. I thought we were already there. <laughs> Andrea Hoagland, 51 Kimmet Avenue. Um, I had two things, but we're running late tonight. Um, I have people uh, that are making my street, Kimmet Avenue, very unsafe. They're from Palmerton. Um, during the holidays, uh, I went over there because kids was playing on the equipment. Um, they park their trailers, their tractors, everything right next to the cemetery because they come from Palmerton. And I understand you want to save on gas and everything. But I went over there and I said, during the holidays, you had some kids that's playing on your equipment. Uh, so make sure you padlock it and it's locked up so kids can't get hurt. Because if they get the tractor or the, the, the backhoe or anything down, they could destroy our, our neighborhood. Anyway, uh, the man from Palmerton said, uh, well, you know what? Uh, the parents here need to train your kids better. Okay. Then he told me, not only do they park at that in our uh, cemetery there, they don't chain up anything. Okay, when I hear them wrapping the chains, that's all they're doing is wrapping chains. They're not padlocking. When I asked, and then he informed me that they don't even have multiple keys. So all the guys that come and get their equipment from this storage area that, okay, they don't uh, have keys or anything. He says we hide the keys in the equipment. So the dump truck, the pool tractors, 
They, okay, so after I asked him about please being safe because kids were playing on it, he blamed it on our neighborhood kids. It wasn't neighborhood kids. It was kids that were visiting people for the holidays, okay? That's number one. So you blamed all of our parents like we don't train our children well. That was rude. Number two, um, I don't know what kind of zoning or permit that they have to park all that equipment there because we have... Um, uh, cemetery people that have a building, they have the, the crematorial, all that, right? They probably pay taxes. They probably pay for the building that they have. They probably pay property tax. They're probably responsible for all kinds of things. The guys from Palmerton that leave their equipment there, this is how they store their equipment. It's just there. They'll come and get their dump truck and they'll leave all the rest of the equipment. But after I asked this man, could you please make sure you're chaining things up? And he told me about leaving the keys in there, not chaining anything up. They don't even put it back on the trailer anymore. So they're not even tra training it up anymore. They're just parking the, the, the hose and the equipment just right there on the ground. So if you're still hiding your keys in there, you're telling me you don't want the kid to fall off the trailer with, your Ill, with, with, the, with the, the tractor or what? Because it's not resolving the problem. It, what it basically was, uh, and again, Andrea, what's the problem? That's what I was told. Andrea, what's the problem? Everybody knows my name. Nobody gives me their name. But again, he told me they are from Palmerton, and they've been parking there for more than a year. It's been more than years. And again, the old regime, they gave passes to people. They allowed them to, like I said, when the dump trucks parked in front of my driveway to retaliate, no one questioned it. Nobody got back to me and said, Andrea, are you okay? No. So now I got people from Palmerton for a couple of years now. How much is storage? Okay, I'm sorry. Wrap it up. How much is storage, though? Probably $100 a unit. You got two lawn trailers. You got the hoe. You got the dump truck. You got a closed-in trailer. You got other equipment. Okay? So again, are they paying taxes in Whitehall for all this storage? Is Kimmet Avenue going to get the money and the resources from storing that for two years? Thank you. Um, next. I'm just saying. No. There's rules and regulations for some people. Andrea? And not and, and, is it Andrea or Andrea? It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Sir. What you're okay. describing sounds like it's construction equipment where they leave the dump truck and they leave the trailers behind. That would be something that you would call into the main office, and I'm going to say talk to the zoning office to find whether whether or not it's a violation or not and work its way through that process. Or if a if it's parked on the street, my understanding is to park on the street, you have to be a licensed vehicle, and that's where you would start with those two sources. Okay. And if you don't get success on that or they are allowed to be there legally, then that's the answer. But that's where you would start okay. rather than okay. starting with the Board okay. of Commissioners. Thank okay. you. But one thing. Sure. Your, your county, your township guys, they all go over there and talk to them. Uh, uh, we have police sometimes, not as much anymore since this conflict with the mayor and Tony, but we've had a lot of staff. They all know these boys, okay? We all know there are signs on the back street that, because I have family members who drive trucks, and I used to tell them when they came into town, no, no, you can't park on my street. It's a $1,000 fine to park your trucks there. So, again, everybody knows what they are I, doing, I but understand. no one, okay, I'll, I'll give you an example. I had Andrea, a tree. There's a three-minute rule. I under I understand. Okay, but I'm saying try that and see. They if it don't works. see it, but you want me to see it for you. Gotcha. No, I, I'm just telling you what I would suggest. Thank you, sir. You, out, thank you for your suggestion. Feel free sir. to call me. Thank you for your suggestion. Enforcement authority, sir. we do not. Yes. yes. I'm, I'm sorry. What say? They have enforcement authority. We, we do, do not. not. The commissioners do not. We can just. I, I understand you don't have enforcement, but there are people here that's listening and they know what's going on. And again. Cite everybody in the town. Don't pick and choose who you're going to cite. Everybody who's, who tells me they've been here 100 years, 30 years, my grandfather. I had to listen to the mayor about his father. I had to listen to Tony about his father. So you all know who them men are. Thank, you want to close thank, your eyes. Thank you for your concerns. We'll hopefully somebody will check in on that. Anthony, Anthony Kopech, please state your full name and your address. Anthony Kopak, 3763 Dogwood Drive. Well, on the November 13th agenda, we heard uh, a gentleman present the fire study. Uh, where does that stand? That's 
December, January, that's three months ago. <laughs> and the words that stick in my head from that, that presentation was, uh, the township is not, not in, oh wait, what is it? That, that the residents are always told, you're not in compliance. That's what it is. So where has where the township done to address that? Not that I'm, I'm not concerned about my safety. I feel perfectly safe in the township, but this is a gentleman that knows a lot more than I do, obviously. Uh, and and you, we, can, we can get to that. And also, back then, there was no, no notation of a three-minute limit back then. That seemed to have changed all of a sudden for no, whatever it, reason. I'll tell you right now, no, it didn't change. Not on there. Just saying that this. Okay, let's this move on. No, let's before, move on, Mr. please. You, you, I got three minutes. I got to keep moving. And, and I'll give you this extra seconds here. What I'm trying to say is this was instituted because we had some people that would speak for 10, 15, 20 minutes, and it doesn't allow the other people in the audience, they go, I'm just sick and tired of hearing about this or that. They want to, They came here for a purpose, that, and that's all we're trying to do. All right, well, here's a tree I looked at for three months on uh, Range Road up by Shot Avenue. The limb was broken, and it, it was hanging there. Now since it snowed, it's fallen down. It's kind of blocking the sidewalk. Uh, picture's worth a thousand words, so we don't need to go any further. Do I need to go to zoning about this tree? Because uh, the one thing I will note, there's snow on the ground, but at least uh, Wells Fargo cleared their sidewalk. Here we have the, the Water Authority up at Lehigh Street. After the weekend, it snowed on Friday. This is a picture Monday afternoon. They haven't cleared their sidewalk. Just like many other businesses in this township uh, failed to clear their sidewalks, but obviously nothing gets done. Is, is nobody from zoning driving by seeing that Businesses aren't clearing their sidewalk. Is it only a, a rule for for homeowners? I I don't get it. But but then then when you get your water bill, they'll tell you to after snowfall to clear a three foot radius around the fire hydrant though. But they won't clear their sidewalk there. And that's a township entity. Uh, and uh, and to get back to the trash, I I'd like to know why you can't separate. It's called trash service for a reason. I want to get rid of trash and recycling. If you want to put leaves and grass and yard waste, uh, that's, that's adding a whole other thing to, to, to the trash pickup that, that maybe people don't want. If you're making me pay for it, I'll, I'll, I'll use it. But that's why you have the Cameron track for people that want to take, get rid of yard waste. Not everybody should be subject uh, to, for an inflated bill because because we're picking up yard waste and grass and leaves. Can I address a couple of your questions? Yes. You, don't mind? you know that I've been had the three-minute rule just like you guys did, and I've abused it when I had the opportunity. Absolutely. I pull no bones about that. The reason a three-minute rule, in my opinion, is there to hash things that are important and not rehash them every month. And as a board, what we're trying to do is work our way through it. And with all due respect, Regarding the trash, that issue has been discussed several times, and the answer isn't going to change. We have a contract. It's going to be reviewed and worked our way through it, and it's on my list when budget comes to review that issue. So to rehash it on that type of arrangement takes away from everything on that side of the table. I am of the belief that if a resident shows up and they have a three-minute topic they want to talk, and it's important, under our rules and our charter, we have the availability, if the commissioners so agree, to extend it beyond three minutes, and I am one for that arrangement. But I believe that that presentation has to be thought out and designed in such a way that it uses the least amount of time through the process. The things that you're talking about, and I think all the residents need to understand, <coughs> is that we're a board of commissioners and there's a group of people that work behind us to support us and make things work out. The point is, moving forward, we're trying to get it that you go to the right person in the township and the mayor's going to be working on how that's going to be done to solve those problems. Your, your question about Harry has to do it but Mary doesn't or vice versa, I understand that because that happens in the township. I see it on a very regular basis. I would like to see it be more uniform, but there's only so much staff, so many things that can be done. And 
there's been a lot of time in the last two years that has been spent on a lot of things that was not productive. This board, and I think I'm speaking for the board, is looking to move in a productive fashion going forward. That's what I'm doing. So you have one there about the fire. You'll look at the discussion items. I have some of those things to discuss tonight at the workshop. We spent a lot of time talking about it, and I'll review it at that time. But everybody here is working to solve some of the issues that we have. Some people are in recreation. Some people open space. I have my own things, and that's what we're trying to do. And I would appreciate if you just kind of work with us a little bit through that process. Thank you. Okay. Th th that's all good. But, uh, you know, when a residence is not in compliance, you give them seven, ten days. This is three months. I haven't heard anything or read anything about what we're going to do moving forward from what was found in the fire study. Thank you. That's, That's it. it. Is there it? Okay. We have, we have two okay. people out there. Please come forward and your name and address again. <laughs> Chuck Fisher, 3234 Flat Rock Drive. And Deb Rosine, 4408 North Church. Um, we would just like to share a little bit of experience that we've had in the past and probably input to the mayor regarding e-recycling, which has been um, kind of responsibility of the EAC to get volunteers. Something that we saw over the last few years is, um, well, our townships really appreciate this event maybe having to a year we are is we really don't need to have that many uh, we kind of saw that last year we had a single one it went pretty well we were able to handle it within three hours um, the other concern that i have personally is our primary volunteers have been football players i doubt we're going to be able to get them the end of june they're going to be gone and if we wait until the fall that's they're in the thick of their season and their practices at that time. So if there's any way that we could work to maybe move up the spring to be within the school year. Basically, their schedule dictated. Yeah. Or, you know, this is the best we could do. And because of the July 4th holiday, we couldn't go back into July and we couldn't go any earlier in June. Yeah. Unfortunately. Now, I was told and led to believe that there's a great need for this. And that's why the two dates were proposed. So I, I can say from past experience. I think they're trying to get some more money out of us. They're actually, they don't actually make, we, we don't pay them. Yeah, I know it's a residence. Users pay them. Pay for it. We, I mean, we do have a lot of, we have had a lot of people who come in. Mm -hmm. But that line usually dwindles by about 11. Yeah, and okay. usually, like, the organization from the township, from the EAC, from the volunteers, usually funnels that group really well. See, in my past experiences, you know, before COVID, we used to have to turn people away because they actually filled the trucks and there, there was no more capacity. Now, they're anticipating, and they're going to have drivers on site to move vehicles and bring more if necessary. They're anticipating you know, major participation, but I'm just deferring to the professionals and what they told me. Well, so. we could probably provide you with the statistics of the last several drives that we've done so that you could consider that. We have done this, I guess, this is what, like three years? Yeah. That the last three years, this is how it's behaved. It's worked very well at the school, the mm -hmm. funneling and the efficiency. EAC has learned the different ways that this would work. Um, if anything, well, the reason why I moved to back to campus was the protection of the canopies if the weather's in Clever. Yeah, I mean, I you think know. I think moving it to this site will be a good thing. Okay. Um, we had a lot of participation in 2021 because we kind of skipped an event in COVID in 2020, but then we saw a market drop off last year. And last year we only ran one event, and okay, we well, were pretty we were done. By noon. I can't noon. change the earlier, so we're going to have to keep that date okay. because we're locked in. And what we can do is we can cancel the second <laughs> if we deem it unnecessary. Fair enough? That sounds good. Okay. We may have to look to other organizations for volunteers to see what we can get because we'll be out, outside of the yeah, normal we had school that, year. We had that discussion in our meeting. If there was a need, we could go elsewhere and talk to other organizations to see if they would be willing to participate if needed. Yeah. Maybe scouts. Yeah, okay. it's possible. But age eight, 
Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the other I mean, we have had scouts in the past. It has been successful at that age level. It has not been an issue. Okay. We can get scouts there. We can get youth there. Not a problem. So long as they're supervised and there's adults over 18. Okay. That's fine. I mean, the last thing I want to say is, how often do you get organizations that come to you and say, right. "We want you to do less. We want less. to participate. Right. We want you to do fewer yeah. things." Right. So we appreciate the enthusiasm, but from experience, it was like too much because there are other things that EAC would like to do. Okay. So. Okay. And thank you again. May you I can one contact up? the mayor on on your own. Yes. He'll be glad to get back to you. Somewhat may, responsive. Uh, may I make one other comment quickly on an agenda item because I don't know if I'll be here uh, later. Um, I just, uh, it's about the historic stuff. I just want to say I have no idea what the discussion was. I have not had any discussion about it, about the, the historic markers, historic declaration for the Mickley Pryden Farm. Uh, the purpose of the property, the building structures, no matter, um, that's completely irrelevant to my opinion on this, but no matter what, I think it's well established that in some capacity this is an historic site. We have, we have declared the Hock and Dockwood neighborhood to be a national, on the National Historic Registry, and I do think whatever was the plan for well, there's, there's, there's no, they're not looking for a historic designation. They're okay. not looking to do what they did at Thomas Island. Okay. So that's not even on the table. Well, what, whatever that is, I, as a member of the public, fully support that this should be declared an historic site. So. Okay. Local historic site. Yeah. Local historic site. Thank you very much. Thank you. Sir? Name and address. You're welcome. Patty Saloon, 303 Sunder Avenue. Mr. Frank, welcome back on from your vacation. Uh, my question is from last month concerning MacArthur Road. My sign between Dave and Buster and Best Buy. It's been waiting for an answer, but they said you're on vacation, so I have to wait. Welcome back. Thank you. Permit goes for the penned up permit. I have not been asked to go ahead and prepare that at this point. Um, I also believe um, from the last discussion from PennDOT, I wasn't privy to it, but I understand that they also want liability insurance for that. I'm not sure. They're not. No. They're not taking responsibility for it. They're not. Yeah. They want. If you want to put it up again, they just wanted a resolution that we, you, the way out township, puts it up and takes it down. Talking about first, the sign or Mechanicsville Road? Sign. No, it's sign. A Merry Christmas sign. Yeah. yeah. Happy holiday, Merry what, Christmas, whatever. Happy Kwanzaa, whatever floats your boat. Yeah, because it's a pinned out road again, that's all. Yeah. Jack, I don't remember what the other Jack, I don't remember what, what happened with the last one. If they got hit by the truck. Yeah. Oh, let's not keep passing bucks, please. I, I talked to Penda, and there's every every single person I have them. I spoke to them, their council face to face, sat there one on one, and they gave me everyone gives me an and uh, what you call it, an answer. So township gives me an answer, Penda gives me an answer. It's never jives. So you're asking is to reinstall, as you were here in December or January, a happy holiday or merry Christmas banner across MacArthur Road. Correct. When you were here that day, you represented, and I think Commissioner Warren also represented, that the banner, let's call it a banner for sake of discussion, okay. okay, would meet all of the requirements of PennDOT, is what you said, based on the height and everything else, correct? We do have that. In other words, it does meet. Is that right, Commissioner Warren? Um, it did in the past. I don't see a reason why it wouldn't anymore. I mean, Frank, I think you said you helped design the poles yeah. and the cable going across there. Uh, the sign hangs down three feet. I think the, the upper pole, the, the, the cable, top cable, is 24 feet. If you assume a foot or two foot sag, the, the goal is the sign has to be higher than 17 and a half feet. Sign, right? And of course, if we put the sign up there and it, it's at 17 and a half feet, I would say it's too close for comfort, but at this point, everything indicates that it, it did, does. So let's make the assumption it does. What has to be done according to our solicitor, we'd have to have the okay for him to file for that permit. That's step number one. That's through the resolution. However, we end yep. up doing that. Okay, step number two, where you said you were going to have somebody donate it mm -hmm. and the responsibilities. And my question at that time to the solicitor was, do we have to have an agreement that once they donate this banner, 
that it's ours done and whatever happens and it's our responsibility or are we allowed to accept something that's thirty five hundred dollars with no contingencies or how do you do that here because i don't know you, you can certainly accept it i mean depending on what the don't worry <coughs> once we could do a simple acknowledgement i mean that that's not a okay that's, yeah, that's simple acknowledgement the, the township is not a nonprofit, so there's no tax deduction or anything else for donating something to the township but if we did an acknowledgement so it was clear we owned it um, if that was important to the donor I, I think we should bring it up at the meeting when everybody's here to discuss reinstituting the installing of the banner if it meets all of the code requirements I think where I mean, we I'm sorry mr. Go ahead. no I think where we stood last the feedback that I got is that PennDOT doesn't come out there and say your poles are good, your cable's good. They're putting that burden on the township. So somebody from the township has to go out and say, you know, based on the diameter of these poles, it can hold the load of 500 pounds on either on the side of it. Happens. And we have two poles. Mm -hmm. Both poles are intact. There's no, they're not damaged below. Mm -hmm. Somebody inspects the cable. There's guy wires. Um, the sign, I think, maximum is. Uh, 325 pounds. 325 pounds with the sprays. We should have a discussion. discussion at a meeting to deal with Frank separately as compared to getting into details tonight, but try to move it forward. Not insurmountable. Just let me know when you want yep. me to start. I'll okay. get the structural engineer who designed it in the first place because we've got to look at the load, the, the size of the cable, the age of the cable. Yep. We may have to restring it with a large one, I don't know, and, and wind shear. That's the things that PennDOT's going to look for. You know, we had to put even a couple of... Uh, Plate readers up on a, on a hmm. mass star. We right now we have uh, two wooden poles and two right. heavy traffic lights at Gra uh, Grape Street. Nobody in the township inspected that. They just threw it up. So, so what was 20 years ago and what is today is maybe different regulations, and I'm okay if we all get together to try to move that forward and do the investigative part to come up so with what right comes answer. first, the discussion here on the board or the, re the review by a competent person? You, I mean, you look at it this way. I'm not asking for the township to put their own money into our township. You're getting a donor that don putting money into this township to beautify for our sales. I mean, around here. All right. Yes. My second topic is Lanta bus is coming through. It's going to be parking through, coming through <coughs> the Whitehall Copley School District, and they're going to go there to the library. Lanta. It's going to stop there. So, for example, I had just had a meeting couple hours ago and students walked from the library to McDonald's and to Wawa so when you're walking from the library when I'm pulling out on Mechanicsville Road so if you're making a right right there I guess I don't know how you say his last name uh, Dembakowitz thank you thank you Dembakowitz has a piece of lot there's orange spray paint there but if you're walking through there I don't know if you're Spider-Man, Superman, Batman, you have to fly over it because you need to walk onto a state road to come back to McDonald's uh, sidewalk, and there's a crossway to get across from McDonald's to Wawa. So my question is, what? I mean, it's been years, so why hasn't this been addressed until, I guess, someone dies, and then we'll address it, correct? That's not appropriate. I understand, but... Okay. We have, I, my personally, I've been working on this for 15 years, all right? Now, in the last maybe three years, all right, we actually got somewhere with the family to get the property. We have the property. It's in the township's name. We're working through our way through PennDOT, and unfortunately, every time it goes down there, there's somebody else who wants to take a look at it, right? Keep moving the goalposts. Mm. We are now, now down to working with Verizon because they have a line under there. All that paint that's out there and the stakes were for Verizon for them to give us utility clearance. They wanted to see what we were building and where it's going to go. Okay, so right now, uh, we're working with PennDOT, Verizon, and our attorney, not this one, another attorney, um, to get the agreement modified with Verizon. Once we have the utility clearance, PennDOT's saying we should be good to go, which would be I can bid that out this year and put the sidewalk in. Excuse me, Frank, your, your, your surveyor was down there in December and marked the Verizon line. Right. Okay. So, so did Verizon go out? Verizon went out and looked at everything, and right now, the, the issue is that PennDOT now, well, PennDOT's going to take over the right-of-way from us because we have it in our name. Uh, they're going to take it in their name, and then they usually do not honor easements when they acquire right-of-way. They basically say, all bets are off. We own everything. 
if we have to move it, then we'll pay you. So right now we're working through Verizon to get that language extinguished. So that there's another third party involved. All the other utilities are clear. That's the last one. Frank, so, is it also true that PennDOT several years ago changed a rule that no PPNL Verizon line or anything can be in the right of way area? It has to be out and has caused a lot of problems for developers and stuff trying to figure yeah. it out. It's the way it is. And it's a process, mm -hmm. a long process. So that if you have four companies on there, you got to get all four of them to do what has to be done and work it through. It isn't well, easy. Luckily, we're in conduit the whole way. So okay. if there's a drop on a McDonald's pole, it goes under the piece and it comes up by the library. So it's in conduit and that seems to be the saving grace. Saving grace, I understand. So Thank how you. long do you think, like ETA-wise? No, I'm expecting within a couple months, all right? But I've been wishful for a lot of years on this project. Summertime? <laughs> Billy really would like to have construction. I'd love to have a construction before. this this spring to let out the job before the buses come back. Exactly, in the fall. right. So, and also not only that, but we're not only providing a sidewalk, we're going to widen the road too, so you can actually have two lanes that come up to feed the intersection. So, and then redo all the striping in that area. You know, you name it. It's Trust all me, there. safety comes first, and I understand this. Well, no, I mean, we've been we've been after this for years, right? Uh, people here, the commissioners know, but I mean. The, the torture that we've been through with this little project has just been a monster. Okay. And it's a PennDOT road, and they're not spending dime one on any of it. This is all the township doing this because precisely for the reason that you're, you're talking about. If you would give but, me a contact, I'm gladly... Buddy, no. this, this, I'm gladly what he's saying is true. I, I mean, understand. I don't think there no. was a commissioner up here that hasn't addressed this in some way. So, again, I appreciate it. it's what you run just, up against. So. I just seen it today very... I mean, shocking. So I said, today you have a meeting. So it's the second part of that also, coming down MacArthur Road with Lanta bus, watching them coming down um, in front of uh, Bank of America, there's a bus stop. Okay. So when you're coming down MacArthur Road, there's a bus stop. There's no, like, park bench or a, quote, unquote, a garbage can. I don't know who can be addressed to that because today they go to Redner's, get their stuff, Flip the, they flip the uh, shopping cart and use it as a bench. And today I seen them, I was right behind the bus, and they just took their McDonald's garbage and, t and just threw it. Right now, if you go on MacArthur Road, the whole front of B Bank of America is covered with trash. Wow. As we speak with, as right now. There is no park bench there and no right. garbage can. No. And so they use the shopping carts as their... Correct. So sitting. they go to Foreman Mills. McDonald's, they can't uh, take any food or anything on the bus. So what they can't take, they have to leave behind. So it would be nice to have an in-the-ground bench that's one of those back. solar compactors or anything like this garbage can. There, I mean, I take part of it. Takes, yeah. I mean, this is our township. You know what I mean, everyone has something to complain yeah. about something, but this is a little simple thing: a bench for people to sit there. Right? If that needs to be donated, also <laughs> trust me, I'll find people to donate it and then put a trash compactor on there too. So I mean, that's mostly the hottest spot right now. That, I mean, there's, if you drive down MacArthur Road and go in front of B Bank of America, it's, I mean, I mean, there's tra more trash on that road right now than Range Road. Mm -hmm. yeah, I, I don't have jurisdiction over I understand, Frank. I understand. I'm wondering if you might want to reach out to Lanta, because they're in control of their bus stops, and a lot of their bus stops don't have any accommodations for folks to sit down. I don't know if that's by design or what. I don't know. I know there was the one... That was down by White Castle. That got destroyed. I don't even know if that ever went back up. No, correct. Someone crashed into it. Correct. Right. Um, but, I mean, by and large, I've never, I rarely see any kind of bench in a, in a Lanta bus stop. I don't know if that's, like I said, if they don't want people there, they don't want to congregate. I don't know. So what my question for. is, I mean, for Whitehall Township, uh, Mayor Marks, for all that trash that's constantly there in shopping carts, is there an ordinance or trash pickup or something that besides the property owner is responsible for? I will reach out to Bank of America and they're going to say, well, it's not our problem. It's, you know, Lana's problem. I'll reach out to Lana and I will also talk to Public Works and see if we can intervene in some way. Ms. Mrs. Rackus, do you have something to say? say it Lee Rackus um, we are we are on a constant um, 
dialogue, not one-sided dialogue with Bank of America and Rite Aid about that bus stop. Um, it's concern to us. We send out our notices of violation for the property. Property has to be maintained by the property owner. And the concern about the Lanta stops is I don't know that there's sufficient right of way for the Lanta stop to put a to put something there. There would have to be easements acquired from the property owners to put any facilities there. I don't think they're very happy with what goes on there either. And we have found different things that you would not want laying on the ground for anybody Trust to me, see. No. I saw it. And there are there's a school bus stop right around the corner. I mean, our code officers are constantly going there and telling them to clean it up. Unfortunately, it's the property owner's responsibility at this point. If the property owner, could the property owner put up a bench without having the easement, a public easement? I guess they could. But I, don't, I, I, mean, I can I'm just tell saying, you, based on the yeah. activity that's been happening there, yeah. they probably were not going to want to do that. I wouldn't either, because you right. don't understand. I took a walk from Fullerton all the way up to Shad Avenue, and what she just stated right now, what you're going to see, is not what a Whitehall Township wants to see. So now, as you are elected officials, I mean, I don't think if you have children or anyone that's sitting walks there, but has what you, what you see on the ground you want there. So I'm addressing it. I mean, so hopefully we can get something that can be taken care of. Okay. I mean, you got to understand, a baby, when a baby cries, his mother takes care of it. But if a baby doesn't cry, you just, just let it go by, you know? He's not crying. So I'm crying. Thank you very much for You're your welcome, comments, sir. Mr. Schumann. Okay. Any other people? Okay, we'll get down to uh, voting on ordinances. Bill number 5-2024, an ordinance authorizing the acceptance of a proposal for providing operational maintenance services for streetlights for Whitehall Township in accordance with Section 3.20 in the Home Rule Charter, which requires authorization of acquisitions in excess of 25000 by ordinance for <coughs> public works. Do I have a motion? I'll make that motion, Warren. I'll, I'll second it, Ken. Anybody have any discussion on that? Any from the public? Mr. Secretary, can you poll the board, please? Commissioner Warren, aye. Commissioner Snyder? Aye. Commissioner Fox? Yes. President Sloniker? Aye. Motion carries, four ayes, zero nays. Bill number 6-2024, an ordinance authorizing the acceptance of a proposal for providing operational and maintenance services for traffic control devices for Whitehall Township. In accordance with Section 3.20 and the Home Rule Charter, which requires authorization of acquisitions in excess of 25,000 by ordinance public works. Do I hear a motion? I make a motion. <coughs> Any discussion from the board? Any discussion from the public? Hearing none, Mr. Secretary, please pull the board. Commissioner Snyder? Yes. Commissioner Fox? Yes. Commissioner Warren? Yes. President Sloniger? Aye. Motion carries, four ayes, zero nays. Public hearing and voting on resolutions. Resolution number 3295, a resolution for sewage treatment facilities plan revision for new land development for Blooming Brands proposed Outback Steakhouse, Whitehall, PA. Do I have a motion? I'll motion. I'll second it. Any question from the board? Any questions from the public? Mr. Secretary, please poll the board. Commissioner <laughs> Fox? Yes. Commissioner Snyder? Yes. yes. Commissioner Warren? Aye. Commissioner Sl or President Sloniker? Aye. Motion carries, four ayes, zero nays. Resolu uh, resolution number 3296, a resolution approving the cost of living adjustment for eligible recipients of the police pension fund. Do I hear a motion? Make, Make that, that motion, Warren. I'll, I'll second it. Is there any comments from the board? 
Any comments from the public? Hearing none, can you please poll the board, sir? Commissioner, Commissioner Warren? Aye. Commissioner Snyder? Aye. Commissioner Fox? Yes. President Saloniker? Aye. Motion carries, four ayes, zero nays. Resolution carries, sorry. Yes. Thank you. Res resolution number 3297, a resolution of the Board of Commissioners of the Township of Whitehall to establish the police pension contribution rate for members of the fund. Do I hear a motion? I make a motion. <coughs> Bless you. Do I have a second? I do. You do? Any questions from the board? Any questions from the public? Hearing none, Mr. Secretary, please poll the board. Commissioner Snyder? Yes. Commissioner Fox? Yes. Commissioner Warren? Aye. President Sloniker? Aye. Resolution carries for aye, zero nays. Resolution 3298, a resolution extending the deadlines of the conditional approval of the major subdivision slash land development plan of Eagle View Towns, located at 5266 MacArthur Road, Whitehall Township, Lehigh County, Pennsylvania, index number 1884-16, provided under resolution three, uh, 3005 on February the 12th, 2018. Do I hear a motion? I'll make that motion, Warren. I'll second it. Any comments from the board? <coughs> Any comments from the public? Hearing none. Mr. Secretary, please poll the board. Commissioner Warren, aye. Commissioner Snyder? Aye. Commissioner Fox? Yes. President Sloniker? Aye. Resolution carries. Four ayes, zero nays. Resolution 3299, a resolution of Whitehall Township, Lehigh County, Pennsylvania, adopting a five-year smoothing method to determine the actuarial value of assets as part of the actuarial value valuation for the Whitehall Township Police Pension Fund uh, plan according to 203.2 of the regulations covering the implement implementation of the actuarial Funding rules of Act 205 of 1984, uh, PL 1005, number 205, 53 PS 895, 101-895.803, no. <laughs> currently known as the Municipal Pension Reporting Program. Do I have a motion? I'll make that motion, Warren. Any questions from the board? Questions from the public? Excellent. Resolution number 3300. You have to vote on it. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I'm, I'm just zooming around here. Yeah. Commissioner okay. Warren, okay. aye. Commissioner Fox? Yes. Commissioner Snyder? Yes. Com President Saloniker? Aye. Motion resolution carries four ayes, zero nays. Resolution 3300, a resolution approving the retirement and commencement of monthly pension benefits to former police officer Ray Sealing. Do I have a motion? Yes, Fox. Do I have a second? I second it. Do I have any questions from the board? Any questions from the public? Can I comment, please? Chief, would you like to say something on behalf of Officer Sue? We held the last roll call for Ray, and uh, Chief would like to make a couple comments okay. on his service. Yeah, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, just real briefly, I don't want to hold everybody up, but I think uh, Ray deserves a, a lot of thanks from all of us. Ray worked almost 32 years now for the township. Um, he was one of the, those steadfast officers that was 
always there. Work patrol his entire career, except for a brief stint in auto theft. And he was a, a very dependable and a, just a great working and a great friend. Um, I'm going to miss him a lot. He was a, he was a really good police officer. And like I said, he was a, a credit to the badge. So I, that's, that's all I have to say. I just I want to thank him for everything he's did, he did for the township. So thank you for your time. Thank you, you and thank him from the board. Absolutely. Uh, <coughs> you got a okay. Okay. Um, I'm going to pull the boat board. Uh, Commissioner Fox. Yes. Commissioner Snyder. Yes. Commissioner Warren. Aye. President Sloniker. Aye. Motion resolution carries four ayes, zero nays. Res resolution number 3301, a resolution designating the McKin uh, Mickley Pryden Farm as a place of historical significance in the township of Whitehall in Lehigh County. Do I have a motion? I'll make that motion. Warren? I'll second it. Second it. Any comments from the board? Question. As we discussed in the workshop session, um, I reviewed all of the things that is put together and the plan for the Pryden Farm. I got one of those provided to me by uh, Commissioner Warren. It appears that most of the work, if not all the work, has been done by either grants with a small, I will call small portion, under $50,000 by the township. If you look at it, it was designed in, in different phases. Phase one is completed. Uh, regarding the other phases, I would only ask that as we pro work our way going down the additional phases, that by that time the mayor has a solution for us of people who know how to do that portion within our community. And that it was also told to me that this designation does not put it at any type of historical type of arrangement affecting saying that it has to have a certain color door, a certain color this. This, this um, recognition is strictly to acknowledge that the commissioners, the mayor, and our residents acknowledge that this particular site has a historic arrangement to us, no one else per se. Or it could be more people. Well, I, but, but it's not it's like ours. we're going on a national register or anything like that. No. We're not doing any of that. No. And that's the way I understand it to right. be, and that's still correct. Is that right? That's correct. Okay, thank you. I, I, will, I will clarify one thing, that some of the grants do say that you'll have a historic review of it. Um, if it's an original banister and it's in good condition, they request that you not replace it. I mean, but it's not holding us to a, a certain window because the windows in there are currently not original. Yeah. Yeah. So I just good. wanted to clarify that. So, all right. Okay. Sorry. Any questions? Uh, okay. You, you have the floor. Okay. Any, okay. Uh, Attorney Gross. If I, I did distribute the, the revised version with the slight changes, it right. doesn't change the, the legal Mm -hmm. statement as, as Commissioner Snyder referenced, but just adds the additional language that Commissioner Warren requested. And you should all have it. I just, yeah. we, just, we just got it a couple minutes ago. Okay. <laughs> Any comments from the public? <coughs> Name and address, please. Yes. Deb Rosine, 4408 Church Street. Um, I, just did, I know we don't want to put it on the register of historic places because then that has a whole lot of controls around what you can and can't do. But are there other programs or can we as a township have a plaque or something that would help as people come to that property identify that it is a historic place for the township? No problem with that. Yeah, yeah we, can, we can definitely put something in there with the lo local. There is, there is a poster down there that does describe some of the history. Mm -hmm. um, there should be a sign when the building's complete that references the Land Water Conservation so Fund. probably the Whitehall Historical Society or something, get them involved because that's kind of in their wheelhouse, so to speak. Um, yeah, okay. Appreciate it, thank you. Thank you, just curious. Any other comments from the public? Mr. Secretary, please pull the board. Commissioner Warren, aye. Commissioner Fox? Yes. Commissioner Snyder? Yes. President Sloniker? Aye. Resolution carries four ayes, zero nays. 
Other discussion items, fire department, volunteer requirements, stipends, contracts, and training. Um, I have both these things on the agenda, and I see <coughs> the chief is here tonight. And for the public, I'm not going to go into the same detail that we did in the workshop, but there was a lot of discussion about these topics. And one of the things that I would like to work on as a commissioner and the uh, board thought it was okay to do so, we do not have a recruiting setup that we're going to actually go out and recruit and figure out what we offer in one place. So if I want to be a fireman, what does Whitehall offer? Well, we offer a stipend. We offer training that can be used other places. We also offer a tax reduction on the local level. The county is coming out with a program. The mayor is, I think, working on something with the school district. But a recruiting arrangement to try to recruit because when you go through the list of people that we actually have, whether the number is 35 or 40 members at this point, we are definitely short members to, to try to get that taken care of. That was step number one. Step number two, the budget calls for approximately 287000 in stipend. I read what the chief gave me on how the stipend works. I've also talked to Commissioner Fox that we, her and I have to get together to explain to me that if I'm in the Egypt firehouse <coughs> and you're in the um, Fullerton firehouse, I'm assuming that both people get the same dollar value for that fire call. I don't know any of those answers. But what I want to do is look at what stipends we have and figure out if that can be increased upon. State of Pennsylvania allows stipends to be approximately 25% of a $55,000 or $60,000 salary. I'm talking in general terms. I want to sit down and analyze how many people we will need to cover what we got to do to get from point A to point B and whether the budget is going to be available to increase if necessary when it comes around in September or October and to make sure that the folks that are currently being stipend are stipend properly. So I'm going to dig into that and find out what's going on. So I would be working with the chief and also Commissioner Fox to learn that arrangement. When I figure out what's going on, I intend to come back and give a report to the commissioners of what I think should happen. Also on our budget uh, this year coming up is a $1.2 million fire engine. I call it a fire engine. You call it different things. But the question I'm looking at is, do we need it? I'm of the belief that budgeting doesn't just occur during October or November. Budgeting occurs all year round. And if you ask me, do I need a pumper? I got to have an educational answer as to whether we do or we don't. We closed one fire station and an analysis of whether we need it or not. I asked the chief to provide me a list of any vehicle that has an engine or a tire, I think is what I explained to him, because I don't know what these things are technically called. I have a list. A lot of our equipment is 15 to 20 years old, 22 in that arrangement. And I'll be sitting down with the chief to get a handle on that and come back to the board and say, here's what I think. Not saying it's the gospel, but I got to dig into it when this thing comes up because I don't want to have a $1.2 million item spent and maybe we don't need it or we could defer it for 12 months until we can figure out what's going on. Because you all know that we have to figure out how we're going to get people to answer these fires, whether we're looking at a various options, because I don't know what it's going to be. But we have to address it. And to me, I want to start with that and work my way through. There are things that's available for you to read that the chief sent me. If he wants to send them out to the other commissioners, it would be helpful. I think it was the, um, the staff. I made a little joke at the workshop that Tom Sloniker is a fireman on, on the list. And I figured out there's another Tom Sloniker maybe someplace. I don't know. But the bottom line is it was the staff, it was the equipment, and the policies and procedures for the stipend and what's required to be a fireman and uh, a firefighter. I'm sorry. And I got to tell you, when I read it, I probably wouldn't qualify to know what you got to do to work your way through the process. We ask an awful lot of our men and women to, to take this task up. And as commissioners, we have the availability and the requirement, in my opinion, to make sure they're funded properly and the stipends are delivered the way they're supposed to be. And I'm not saying they're not now. I'm saying I'm investigating. Is that fair enough? That's all I have to say. And anybody wants anything to add with that? That's on that topic. I, I would add to the, the stipend question that we look at it from a bureau standpoint that each department's not given a pool of money and then it's split up between that department by the number of calls because I think that creates an inadequacy where a department that has a lot of calls is splitting up the same pool of money of, of another department that 
as she recalls. I think we've, I think over the years we've probably corrected some of that. So um, the question of the new vehicle, I guess I, my question is, is, is it a fire truck or is it a rescue pumper that would respond to accidents? We have two rescue pumpers. That would, that would be information that I would want to know. It's a rescue pumper. A rescue pumper. Okay. So that's a vehicle that would respond to an accident, not necessarily a, another fire truck. It has storage units to carry heavy equipment, things of that nature. The other thing, too, in the list of apparatuses, I want to know, I would like to know, first call, first call engine, second call engine, third call piece of equipment. I don't want to get into this situation where we were a couple years ago where someone was griping because we were not replacing the oldest second due engine in the township over a truck that was the first due. The first due engine is the one that gets out the door. If we're not getting two trucks out the door, I really don't care if the second truck is 28 years old if it's got running wheels, if another department needs a, a newer first due engine. That's my opinion. I don't know if the other board members feel the same, but we're, we need to make sure our first due engines are the ready to go. So I'll leave it at that. Any comments from the public? Please. Well, well, Andrea's coming up. I would just say, like, when we buy a new truck, that first due engine usually gets cycled down to a second due. So the second due engine is always going to be 18, 20 years old. So sorry, Andrea, thank you. No, Thanks. that's fine. Um, I just want to say um, 15, 22 years, it doesn't mean anything unless you say how much use we used it. Um, when I was here and we was talking about BMW bikes to chase down four-wheelers, to me, that's ridiculous. That's overkill. Um, there must be some kind of order catalogs or something that you normally buy equipment and stuff from. There is. So hopefully we stick within that because, like I said, at that one meeting, they said they already voted on it or it was already decided with those BMW bikes. I mean, again, fantasy. Now, let's keep within our budget and keep people in their homes because all this m requires money, it requires taxes or raising things. Um, in our community, my community where I live at, 90, 180 year old people, um, we don't have a lot of income coming in. We do have new families and a lot more children. We got school buses again. Um, so, but uh, as far as something being 15 to 22 years old, a lot of the newer stuff they're making now is cheap. It don't last. Um, so. We could buy a brand new engine or a brand new pumper, whatever, and it might be worse than the one we have because of the material or the way it's manufactured or made now. We don't have quality control. When I was growing up, you had somebody check quality control on merchandise. We don't do that anymore. We just replaced everything. Four to five years, we'll buy new ones. And just so you know, so. though, we do have the mechanics that <coughs> work here. They go over this stuff. They tell us pretty much, is this shot or is this something that can be... And, and, I, and, I, and I, I love, and, I, I love and that. And we go with the mechanics. And, okay. You know. But not, not, not always, because I've seen your system here, and sometimes you have bullies, and you have people that push themselves in their own agendas, and nobody stops them. I visited the Public Works Department <laughs> when we were ordering police cars and we were ordering the other trucks. I mm -hmm. went over and talked to the gentleman over there and asked him why and how. Mm -hmm. It explained to me why we use a police car because it runs for 24 hours and mm -hmm. 30,000 miles is nothing based on the arrangements. They explained to me that they have a log of every piece of equipment that has an engine and a tire here. Mm -hmm. They have the maintenance logs in each one of them. The chief explained to me that the average fire equipment lasts between 22 and 25 years thereabouts. Okay. All these kinds of things I'm going to be digging into and asking okay. questions. And the board was fine with me asking who I had to, and I will mm -hmm. be going through the mayor to make sure that I can talk to these people and find okay. out what's going on. $1.2 million is a lot of money, folks. And I just want to make sure that it's I just, that's like all I, I'm saying. Like you're saying, I just want to, for the whole town, not just I know. certain people. And, and, and again, training and stuff like that with the BMW bikes, how many people are going to get trained? So why would we buy two bikes and only two people can ride them? Is there any other public comment? Okay, discussion item number two, recreational capital improvements. For the parks in 2024, plans for the pavilion, Mickley Pryden Farm, and West Catasauqua. Request for each park's wish list for additional improvements and funding of these projects. So that's mine as well. <clears throat> Recreation is something that's really important. I'm trying to figure out some things that I 
just, I'll be honest, I can't, I can't figure it out. And I'll tell you what they are. First of all, um, the pride in farm as far as dollars and cents, I've s explained to that previous, that's no longer a question and issue on my side of the table. The parks and recreation, there are wish lists that I asked for from our Department of Recreation, and I got a wish list. I also went out and I visited Cementon, the Pavilion, uh, Shot Avenue, and Fullerton on an individual basis and had a tour of each one to find out exactly what the status was. I thought that Fullerton should be torn down because that's what I was told. I walk through it, I have a different opinion at this point. So I'm one of these crazy guys that will go and gather my information and try to figure out what the heck's going on. When I was at Cementon, there is a request to paint the building. And these are just things that have been talked to in general th things. And I think the mayor was involved when that happened. I can't understand why you would paint the building, but the garage door is rusted out and has a hole in it. And you're not going to replace the garage door. I'm of the belief that if I'm going to do it, I do the job right. Why am I going to blacktop 150 feet and stop and not go to the rest of the way? These are the questions that I'm asking and trying to figure out how you do that. The part that I haven't figured out is how it works internally with the budget. We got a deputy mayor that's very good on these purse strings. And I've been asking him a lot of questions like how the heck do you get this stuff done? There's something called core states. Is that what it's called? Core state? Co-stars. Co-stars. Yeah. Certain things get approved under core. Core stars, and so funding becomes easier and certain things do not. So what I'm trying to do is to get a list of things that should be done at each particular location, find out what we can utilize and who owns it and who does not. When I walked through the Jefferson Park Pavilion and I saw in West Caddy <coughs> that they don't have a kitchen and I see a brand new, what I would call a brand new kitchen, just wasting away in a building that's not being used, that was like an alarm to me. On the same token, I was at another playground and it was Fullerton where I saw picnic tables brand new laying in dirt and mud and we need them up here. Why can't we just move them? So what my goal is to ask questions, and I do understand that we have the village mentality that village A needs certain things, and if you give it to village A, village B doesn't. I need to dig in and find out that, for example, West Caddy had a large subdivision that came through and maybe their, their, their money till is a little bit bigger and they can do certain things. So I want to dig into that and do it the right way. The pavilion right now is, in my opinion, could be a shining star for this township. We've had a lot of discussions of what the heck went right and what went wrong up there. What went wrong is behind us and we can't fix it because it's done. Going forward, our public, our, our Department of Recreation is going to have five concerts there. You could have anywhere between 250 and 500 people. I want to make sure that when they show up, they see something that's nice and done the right way. There was things that aren't done that I can't figure out. I know I'm a detailed guy, but there's a plan that shows, for example, that you're putting in a 30-inch uh, countertop. Countertop standard of 24, 25. 30 is a custom-made arrangement. These are the little details that make the difference up there. So I've talked to the mayor, I've talked to Brandon, I think I've talked to Jeff on some of these issues of how we can get this thing and correct it. There's some workmanship, there's some workmanship things that look different to me and I asked why I got my answers. They need to put a rain spouting up there, am I right? Blows my mind when I, I again, you know I'm new up here, this thing called prevailing wage. When I found out the cost of this rain spouting on prevailing wage, I almost fell off the chair. So I'm learning how this works. What I haven't learned is how I can move the money from position A to position B. For example, there was a grant that was received of approximately 130 some thousand dollars that came in the township. Next month, grants is on my list, not this month. And that money, we had a total amount of 450,000 in the budget to do something. The grant came in for 130. In my mind, I have an extra 130 in the piggy bank. So I want to figure out how I can move that 130 to things in the recreation area that can be used quicker and faster so we can see it. <coughs> my pet, if you want to call it my pet peeve, is West Caddy. That particular location gets 800 people per month visiting for either lunch, breakfast, events, or whatever. That site is in need of a lot of work. 
I'm going to try to get that as much as I can with the cooperation of the mayor and the commissioners to get that up faster than where it is. I will tell everybody sitting up here, I have learned one thing in my first month. If it takes a week in my private business to do it, it's four months here. So I'm figuring out how I can work my way through the process and do that and ask the questions. One issue is I sometimes tick a couple people off because I ask, but this is the goal that I'm trying to work my way through. It's not there to put anybody on the carpet, but if you don't ask, you can't figure out how to get around something. And that's what I'm trying to do. The budget is something that I have to talk to Jack about. I don't know how you move money around and get things taken care of. The cost overruns that happened up at the pavilion, they're being taken care of, but sometimes there's no money to put a little extra blacktop in. I got to get my arms around that. So that'll be a conversation between me and whoever I got to talk to to learn that because I don't know how it works. Fair enough? Any, that's all I have on the recreation side for right now. And I agreed to share my stuff with the, the folks when I get it all put together. It'll probably take me two, three months. I would add uh, <clears throat> a lot of the um, recreation projects. We do have a finite recreation capital improvement plan every year that doesn't cover everybody's wishes. Um, the revenue stream. You want two pools, when a pool's losing $50,000 and you want an open second pool, that money has to come from somewhere. It's called, it's called taxes. And it's, either you take it out of, we're not, gonna, we're not gonna retire an officer to do a pull. But going back to the, some of the added features that we wanna do, grants for the Ironton Rail Trail or the pavilion or something else, the state doesn't always fund you the, the full amount the first time. So it's usually a series of grant applications. And then at the end of the, pro, at, at the, at the, end of the four grants, you decide, okay, I have X dollars. I'm not gonna be able to do everything I want from cradle to grave, but I'm content with doing X, Y, and Z in phase one, and then maybe two years from now doing phase two and three. So I always looked at some of our grants for our other projects. Um, capital, if we apply for a grant, and it does come in, two projects, I think we had over $300,000, $350,000 in grants that came in through budget line items. As Mr. Snyder was saying, that's not necessarily $350,000 now we can pick up and move somewhere else, but it would be nice if we could leverage some of that mid-year, towards the end of the year, if we see that things are coming in above plan or at plan, it gives us some discretionary do dollars to get some projects to the finish line. So I agree in that. So the 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 parks are the residents assets let's take cement for example there's a lot of buildings up there that that are in good shape the volunteers have done a really good job we're at the point now that the volunteers can't keep up so we have to protect our assets and work our way through every building i attended had the fire requirements on it they were all inspected so that was all up to snuff Something that caught me off guard is every building I was in, the thermostats were set at 70 and running automatically. In Fullerton, it's set at 70, nobody's been in that building, and the answer I got was, well, that's how it's set. Okay, we can argue 55 or 60, but I don't know how that works. These are just the little things. Um, so when, you, when, you, when, you, when we look at the budget, I believe that we have underfunded recreation, okay, on some of our locations, and it's time to come and do the dance. Why would put a blacktop road parking lot up at Cementon and not do the last 100 feet, which is rough as well, blows my mind. But maybe there's reasons for it, but if we can figure a way to put fresh blacktop all the way up and do all the lights and make it work and figure a way to paint this building, so be it, let's get it done and off the list. And that's what I'm trying to figure out how you do that. Our Public Works Department is very good at filling in in the wintertime, but another 45 days, these guys, they're not gonna have the time, they're cutting grass is what they're gonna be doing, okay? So these are the things that I'm looking at, and it may take me six to nine months, but I just, it, you know, you, you talk about equipment set up, moving people around, cost of material and all this stuff changes. If you could do the blacktop this year versus next year, you'll save dollars and cents if it's possible to get done. And I, I don't want you to think I misunderstood. If grant money comes in, and it's allocated, and we were paying that 100% ourselves, and grant money comes in, and we can use in that project, it basically freed up the money that we're getting on the grant if we made that. No, I'll leave that for another day because I've got to learn that. I can only obtain so much, okay? Thank you. And one last thing, I, I, I'm sorry to belabor this issue, but there's a fund, it was called the Lafarge Fund. Sometimes, in order to do a project and get a grant, 
you have to complete the project and show you met X, Y, and Z. Submit your documentation to the state, you get your money most of the time, you know. So sometimes we need a pool of money to leverage those projects. So it would be wonderful that if we have a surplus year where we carry over, let's say $1.4 million in revenue that we kind of weren't expecting, but it was a good, good economy year, I'd like to see some of that money put aside into a general match fund because almost every grant, most grants required some level of match, whether it be 10% or 15%. We run into a stumbling block where this park wants to do something and went after go after a grant, but it requires a 15% match. In the middle of the year, we have no way of making a commitment to say, we'll apply for a $100,000 grant and we have $15,000 to match it. I mean, that basically, I guess the... The view is if we can get a grant, we'll try to find, we'll find a way to match it in the following year's budget. So, I mean, that's something to think about. Commissioner Fox, any No, okay. I think Treasurer wants to get going. Uh, I understand, but I, <laughs> oh, we first tell? cover everything here. Okay, uh, we take things out a little bit out of order. We're going to have reports of public Whoa. officials. <laughs> Sir, what, what is, <laughs> name and address, please. Public comment on topic one. Anthony Kopak, 3763 Dogwood Drive. So we're talking about parks and the Grantford Rail Trail. Well, I go down through hockey, it's hockey park right down here to get up to the trail. And and part of, part of the pathway through the park is blacktop, then the rest of it tur turns to stone. Well, in the bend there, it's all washed out. And, and yes, I did call uh, Brandon and Parks to discuss that matter. But the question came up, you know, why not pave it? Can, can, can't that be part of the, the paving of the rail trail? Or is, is that something separate there? I mean, we're not talking, you're talking a couple ton of blacktop. If it constantly washes out, why don't we just pave it? So the answer to your question is... In the beginning of our first meeting, I advocated a director of facilities, okay? Not the picture. I understand. And the director of facilities, in my opinion, is dramatically needed in some format in this township. The reason I believe that is because this person would have the time and the knowledge to go out and assess that. I don't believe at this time we have both the staff or the knowledge to go out and assess some of these things. And the mayor was charged with the fact of going and raising a plan or creating a plan to deal with this because it's, it's a slot in our charter that says we need that. So I think that if we can figure this thing out, that a lot of these issues will be resolved moving forward because you are correct. But if I find what I did find out is that when you want to try to find somebody to do it, most of the time the people are not have the time or they have the working knowledge. And you got to remember, COVID tore a lot of things apart in private companies as well as government. And it's a rebuilding process. So to be honest with you, you are correct, and the assessments have to be done. But you have to, you have, to have the, the quote, the help and the knowledge to do that. And that I think something that the mayor will be even talking about maybe tonight or next meeting because he's charged with doing that. Am I right, folks? So that is something that you'll see improvements on. Am I right, Mr. Mayor? That's correct. Yeah, so we are having those conversations, and it's sooner than later. I mean, th th this is something that's got to be addressed now, and, and he said he was going to take care of it and, and look into it, just need to talk to Public Works. But Where is this? Is this near Hockey Park? It's the, in Hockey Park, right next to the, the, the pool that's down there. You take the, the path to the park to get up the rail trail. Oh, I know what you mean. The parking lot to the rail trail. I, oh, yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah. That needs right, to be next to the, right next to the small pavilion. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. We're going we're gonna to address But that. if it's a constant issue there, why not just pave it? That can't be done as par part of the... I'm going to look into that because we did some paving at the parking lot last year. So, yeah, I'm going to look into that. If not, we're going to get some crushed stone and we're going to roll it. And we'll get there. We have a we have a rail trail paving project coming up. I don't 
that's not included. That's exclusively for the rail trail, but I'm going to address that situation. Right. But uh, 250000 or so to, to pave that trail, is that the whole loop going through, through Copley? No. Or, it's a cooperative grant, yeah, would except for <laughs> the part that isn't owned by either Copley or Whitehall. Because there's parts of that trail that actually are smoother than some of the paving spots on 145 here. <laughs> to me, that's a waste of ta taxpayer money. And yes, it's a grant, but where do the grants come from? They come from the taxpayer. Correct. There are Correct. plenty of smooth spots on that trail that basically require no attention and, and I don't know how many people sitting up here ride the trail or go out on trails this trail is in absolutely phenomenal shape they're going to do anything unnecessary they're going to they're going to address the areas that really need to be addressed and that's what that's all about you know but you got you got to go out there and ride the trail to actually understand it yeah. but Mr. Cove I agree with you that that leg needs to be done it's a muddy mess I was down there last year, and I talked to Brandon about it, and I, I can't agree more. And we're, we're going to address that problem one way or the other. Well, I brought it up. He said he was going to look into it, but since we were talking about parks and the rail trail, I said, well, I'll jump right in. I was already contacting who I should contact without bringing it up to the board. So, But it was on the agenda, so okay. thank you. Okay, we're going to go out a little bit of order here. Reports of public officials. We're going to have the treasurer give her report first. Thank you, President Sloniker. Um, I gave my report to the commissioners if anybody has any questions about them. We closed out the tax year for 2023, and March 1st, the garbage and the township taxes will be out and will be in full force. We decided to do something a little different. We got the business privilege licenses out earlier and the invoices out earlier, which was January. So I'm happy to say in 2022, I started, we collected $29,250 in business license. Last year, we really worked hard. We moved that to $32,725. And in 2024, for the first two months, we collected $47,495. That's two months into the year because we're really trying to find businesses, landlords, and Lee agrees with me that there's so many landlords in this township that aren't licensed. The other thing I've been working on is I check monthly on claim property. We're getting another check from the PA Treasury for on claim property for the township. And I think that's it. Thank you very much for letting me go. Thank you. Thank you. So Thanks for your patience. You know me, it's a <laughs> You have bank statement, central operating account, a balance of $21,500,000. That's the township's account. What's in it? Everything. Escrows, all that stuff. Not escrow. Traffic impact. Not escrow. Traffic impact, recreation escrow, uh, Lafarge fund, uh, liquid fuels, capital reserve, debt service, general. That's even before our taxes start coming in in the beginning of the year. Correct. Thank you. Uh, reports of public officials, the Board of Commissioners, Commissioner Fox. Well, I did go to the emergency management. I learned a lot. Um, they're here, so they can kind of give a little bit more <laughs> background um, if anyone would like to. I mean, like, like I said, I'm learning and I'm new to it, so it's very interesting and I would, you know, <laughs> a little help, guys. <laughs> It was a lot to learn that day. It was a lot. <laughs> so, Chris Grimm, Emergency Management Coordinator. So um, we uh, had a few months off, and uh, last week our staff met uh, for the first time for the year. Um, Mayor Marks was there, and uh, Commissioner Fox was there as our uh, liaison. And uh, we had a good meeting. We went over a lot of stuff. Um, you're going to see us be a little more active, um, getting out there, doing some stuff. So... You know, we kind of filled uh, Commissioner Fox in on what we do, what our role is, when our role is, things like that. So uh, it was a very good, uh, very good meeting. So, um, so if anybody has any questions, let me know. Yeah, you're welcome. Um, Nixel. Yes. Um, 
I know we don't want to overuse it, but I think there are times when we should be using it. Such as? Like uh, the chemical release in South Whitehall. It was all over Facebook what? that there was an odor there. When, even when it was all clear, it should have been put out to the public. It wasn't until the next day, me as a commissioner, right. I didn't know it was resolved. I and think it took us a while to figure out what was going yeah. on uh, in the first place. Yeah. Um, I was involved with that. Um, I was out there with the fire department. Um, actually, when we realized it wasn't anything in Whitehall, I still went over to uh, Geochemical with uh, some of the other folks. And, you know, they... Let's put it this way, the hazmat team had a hard, a hard time getting into, you know, the, the geochemical. But, yeah, we could have used it then, yeah. you know, and just I, as a Once as it's all alert. clear, right. you know. Yeah. Because people were saying it smelled like something rotten. Another yes. person, yep. I forget what they said, fabric softener. Uh, that sounds like a glorious term for something smelly in the air. Right. But, I mean, as But a we do also have yeah. that, uh, you know, yeah. um, that's a historical problem with the pig farm, so I don't want to. As far as uh, oh, smells that. in the air, we know what that smells like. Um, but <laughs> it doesn't smell like that. That is, that is a we could have used it then, yes. Um, but you know, for so something like that, or uh, shelter in place, something like that. Yes. You know, I like I said, at the time we the we were we didn't know what was going Facebook. on with that, but it was definitely you know after the fact. I agree, we, we could have said <laughs> something. Good. I'm not believing. I'm not saying yeah. anything was wrong. I'm just saying. Some other municipalities might use it for overuse it. But yes, right. some and they do. It's it's to me, it's an emergency mass notification system. If you overuse it, people tend to ignore it. They just say, "Oh, here's another Nixle message." And then when you do need it, you do need the residents to, you know, adhere to whatever you're putting out, such as a shelter in place, evacuation, whatever it might be. They're going to disregard it because they're going to go, "Oh, it's just another Nixle message. Here we go again." Um, you know. Prior places wanted to use it for, oh, we're, we're pushing the date for the trash a day. That's not an emergency Nixle message. I'm sorry. You, you know, we have other, plenty of other methods to get uh, Facebook, social media, our website <coughs> to get that message out. That's not an emergency if we're pushing trash a day. So, um, and that's, you know, we, we pay for it being a mass notification system for emergencies, not for everyday use. So that's like, you know, we can loosen up, a, you know, a little bit on what we send out. Um, you know, once again, I just don't want people to get uh, immune to getting Nixle messages all the time. And then when we really want them to adhere to it, not so. But I've, I've talked to the mayor. We're going to come up with uh, more of a, a standard operating guidelines as far as what we want to send out when, you know, it doesn't have to be in stone, but more of a guideline. So that way it's... And a backup uh, plan if you're out of town or something like that. No, we, we do. Yeah. Um, the, the mayor will have access to it. Um, my deputies have access to it. Uh, Lieutenant Beeler has access to it from the police department. So there are multiple people <coughs> that have access to it and can send um, it out. Just a simple thing, like the road closures on Lehigh Street. If our guys put out barriers the night before, 10 o'clock in the morning, that's when I'm first seeing it in the Facebook. So it might be helpful. So we, we do have, that's an issue we have to work on. I don't even know when they're closed. We, yeah. we don't have, unfortunately, we don't have a good communication system between even in the township to let those that need to know know that roads are closed. So unfortunately, if I don't know or the mayor doesn't know until the morning time that a road's been closed for six hours, it's hard to send out a message when we, we don't know. So we, once again, uh, that was something we talked about uh, at our meeting. Uh, talked to the mayor about that is, is somehow getting us all on the same sheet of music. Um, not sure what that looks like yet, but we're going to figure that out here shortly. Facebook post. But <clears throat> we actually use Nixle tonight because I'm going to declare a snow emergency from 4 a.m. to 3 p.m. tomorrow. So it was used. Yes, that, so that, I literally sent that out from the back of the room, so. <laughs> South Whitehall, so we'll see if we get ours. Once again, yeah, South Whitehall, sometimes like Upper Mukunji overuses theirs. South Whitehall, you know. South, South Whitehall, too. Very quick question, Deb Rosine, 4408 Church Street. Shouldn't that be part of our emergency preparedness plan? Those kinds of guidelines of... That, they are. We're, we're That's what we're working on, is, is making sure they're part of that. currently revising everything. They're looking yeah. documents. They're always yes. being updated. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, 
up to the mic. You know the procedure. I know. I got down pat after. Okay. Lorianne Fanel, 3107 North 3rd Street, Whitehall. Just speaking of road closures, um, a while back over by Lafarge, there was a hazard. The road was closed for almost three days. And, like, I got there. I'm like, holy crap, the road's closed. And here it was closed for three days. There was no announcement from the police department that I saw on their Facebook page. No announcement from the fire department that it was closed. And there was a wire down and tree down. <laughs> We really got to make sure you guys can be communicating with the public. So the public just come upon and all the cars, like, because there was traffic, everybody was having to turn around. But it's like, nobody knew. Like, you know what I mean? So we got to make sure up in those roads, especially when there's wires down and over the horizon, whatever it was. It was closed for three days. But nobody knew. Besides, everybody else on Facebook communicating with each other. You know what I mean? So I think in that type of situation, where was our fire department? Where was our police department? Why aren't they, why didn't they announce it? I mean, somebody has to have better communication, right? I mean, they I both have to respond. I don't know. No, I'm being serious. Like, if you look at it, if they're responding to a wire down and there's a tree down, which is what I saw, on both sides, it was closed, it should have been announced. That's all. Like I said, that's, that the mayor and I had a uh, discussion about that, and it's something we're going to work on, making sure we're all on the same sheet of music for those uh, emergent events. Um, even using Nixle for some of the flooding events, if you've been in, lived in Whitehall, you know, for a hot minute, you know that there's, you know, three or four places that traditionally flood all the time when we get bad rain. Everhart Road, Water Street area, Lehigh Street by Hockey, um, just to name a few. And, you know, if we get a good rainfall, those are guaranteed to be closed. So, um, but once again, we're, we kind of see some of the deficiencies and we're, we're going to work to improve those. And that's why we're discussing it right here because there's some things that people didn't think of and when you're when you do have something like a road closure that's for three days and then you find out it's because <coughs> of what or not or and you everybody has to know and it obviously should be reported to the administration the mayor whatever and they can make <coughs> the necessary arrangements for the public so right exactly we appreciate that exactly thank, thank you thank you Elizabeth. Great on that. Yeah. You answered many questions. Oh, he left. Uh, you, you go. Oh, I, I spoke too much tonight, Frank. I think you asked, you answered my question on Mechanicsville Road. I would be bugging our the other attorney monthly, weekly. Let's move it along because I think what happens is we forget about it. Mm, we'll forget and it's, about it's quiet. It's, they have two and if we need to have. So stay on it. If we need to have PennDOT come in here before they come in here for their other meetings, I'm, it's, it's, I don't want to be sitting here if somebody got hit. And it's, we could have this sidewalk done in three years. And I think the tree can come down any time. Uh, yeah, that, that, is a, that is a safety hazard. There's that huge tree that you, it, you, you, you five feet diameter. Around. You can't see around. I, I mean, you're coming out of McDonald's there, and you're... I'm positive why again. there's at least been some near misses <laughs> and probably some hits. And it was because you didn't have the site. Simple as that. Public official. Commissioner Snyder. Uh, two things. I'm liaison for the sewer authority. I will be on vacation it's a Thursday uh, before this the Thursday. end of This coming Thursday. Yes, I have the wrong date. <laughs> Someone gave me the wrong date, so then I'll, I'll make adjustment for that. And uh, I'm also liaison on the zoning board. I've spoke to Lee about this. There are two items, uh, Attorney Gross, on the zoning board with one or two the same developer. And depending on how that zoning board rules can have a dramatic effect on the residents in that particular community. I don't know if I could tell you what community it is, but um, it is. It is something that we have to enter an appearance on and make sure that we protect ourselves because if it goes the wrong way, there are residents who had certain expectations and the developer did not, f I, I'll leave it at that, I think. I don't, I don't know what I can tell you or not tell you, but it's a big concern. Do you want me to give you the details? I, I, I am aware, and uh, Attorney Cohen, my partner, is going to be at at the meeting representing the township. So I don't know if the Board of Commissioners says to him, um, please enter on behalf, or it's his decision that night. No. All you I want you to yourself. do right now, yeah. and again, this is what I've I know learned. That's what I'm saying. Zoning, you're there to watch and observe, that's and right. then talk to the art legal thing and go from there. Really you you, stay you away from want that to issue. keep your mouth closed when you're there. I mean, I that, 
Really? I know. And, I know. And again, and I'm just I saying know. that. That's why I want you to go ahead and talk to the attorney. I've been to other zoning meetings in other townships where they do not send an attorney and they miss the boat. That's all I'm telling you. No, no. Us. And I just want you to be on board. <coughs> I'm happy to speak to you separately, Fine. but just so you are aware, um, Attorney Cohen, my partner, uh, Sam Cohen, is going to be there representing That's all I think. Thank you. Just, I get it. I just know it. it the way it was explained to me, bad times at the OK Corral kind of a thing. Yeah. All right, now we're going on to the mayor's report. Okay, I'll make this brief. Once again, I'm going to declare a snow emergency from 4 a.m. till 3 p.m. tomorrow. It's going to be advertised on WFMZ, Township website, Facebook, EMA. It's all there. Uh, Parkway Pavilion water line and fixture winterization. We winterized the Parkway Pavilion before the really hard weather set in and we were successful getting PPL to plug the meter in so now we have heat so now the line should be protected and we should not have any problems moving forward. Uh, I'm working with the school district administration and their treasurer, their vice president president. I requested a tax abatement slash rebate for our men and women on the fire department as an incentive for them to serve. The county currently has a program that they initiated this year. The township initiated one a number of years ago. It just incentivizes people to step up and serve on our fire department. Hopefully they'll agree to it and we'll get something out of it. Uh, I'm studying fire department issues as we speak. I'm studying the director of operations that Mr. Schneider referred to earlier and our surveyor's position. Uh, we're currently working on West Caddy Park. We are doing a senior, well, the West Caddy Park building where the seniors hang out. We're doing a refresh. We, we did a fresh coat of paint. We're gonna upgrade the lighting and the flooring is being ordered as I speak. And we're also gonna deal with some minor electrical issues in the kitchen to make sure that it's safe until a study and a grant is going to be applied for to address the kitchen issues in the future. And that's really all I have right now. I'm good. Thank you. All right, now we're gonna get back to revisit the voting on the position of commissioner that we moved to the <coughs> end of the meeting. So again, we're at the a motion approving the appointment of blank to the town, Whitehall Township Board of Commissioners term ending December 31st, 2025. Is there uh, a reintroduction of anyone that was presented before? I have a question. Could we please find out in the audience that who, no, 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 oh, no, 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 just, no, this is, I'm telling you right now, it, it's the board. It's not no. the audience. Yeah. I'm just saying it's the board because we'd get, this is something that that's why I wish people would get out there and get their name on the ballot. This is not that kind of thing here. It's our duty to pick the right person to fill the vacancy. Well, then maybe you should let me finish the question. Well, and again, I, when you said I'm going to pull, you said you're going to go ahead and talk to the audience. I didn't say that. Well, I'm sorry. That's what I got out of it. I'm sorry, maybe I'm sorry, I, I'm sorry maybe if that's the case. Okay. We're going to postpone the meeting. We agreed that we would do three and no, we discussed and, and, we did, we agreed we would discuss it. And it was supposed to be a discussion <coughs> before we postponed the meeting or continue the meeting. Is that correct? And right now what I'm doing is if anybody wants to resubmit a name, okay, that we can go ahead and have that vote to see if anybody's minds has changed. Okay. okay? And we do that. And then if we have to go further, then we'll do that. But right now, I, I prefer that we, again, if somebody has changed their, their opinion of what should be, that's what I, I'd like to do. Because it would make everything simplified if we do have on that vote that we get somebody that can come up here get sworn in by Larissa and we're a full full board next so time. then I would like the record to show that mr. Koch is not here tonight because I think he's not as I'm looking through the audience and it should indicate That's not what I asked for I out. asked for if there was any motion uh, it do you have a name to put up there this yes. is what I'm hope well please present it that's what I asked for 
I, I don't want you. You shortened the discussion in the beginning. Now, uh, 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 hear me out. You shortened the discussion in the beginning. You wanted to <laughs> to the end. That's fine. <coughs> this is an important decision. No. I think, I, I think on the record it should indicate who's here and who's not here. And, and I think that's, it, it, and and think again, that's, that's part of the. It, we're going to defer. If you we're were, defer it, hear me out. We're going to defer this, okay? Because we can't get a, 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 a vote. And, and I, I agree. But in the same token, I think the audience and everybody should know that the people who are supposed to want this position is not here. Ken, we understand that. We just want you to put a the name up. The record doesn't indicate. Ken, we're all we're to asking name. for, if you're going to present anybody's name, and it doesn't have to be you. It could be Elizabeth. It could be, it could be Jeff. You, you can screw up a soup sandwich. You know I'm, just, I'm just you know saying. That, gentlemen, that's Please. Okay. Yes. Please listen, go listen. away. I'll make the nomination. I'd like to no nominate Rob Pelligian. I second it. Was, was that it? real hard there, Kenneth? No. Because everything, a good, a sunny day is a battle. We're yeah, done. I enjoy We're it. done with your battles. Relax. relax. Hey, All you right. Say, you say what you want. It Re relax. I'm sorry. Side hit is relax. Relax. Okay. Kenneth, let me, let me speak before I we okay. go first. Okay. We had, we had two candidates come in here. Mm -hmm. And I thought they both presented well. One candidate had stronger assets in one area, was a volunteer here had many years on the Planning Commission. Another one maybe had some philosophies that were more similar to mine, was involved with the park system as a child, kind of, that's our problem. So we, I don't think we had consensus. I felt that there wasn't consensus on one candidate. And so we went through one candidate vote, we went through another candidate vote, I threw out a third candidate. Oh, shame on you. I, I fully expected where we were going to go. And so we're back to where we're talking. And I think sometimes politics is personal. And when I see people like take directing it, per, you know, guess. It, no, it's, it's not, no, I'm saying it's, it's not right for someone to target you if they disagree with you or you or you, but it happens in politics and we can't fight back, but we are, we will. And continue. Yes. And so I was thought this would be an adult discussion. We go through the motions and then maybe maybe I'd dig my heels in or maybe I would reconsider. But I don't think we need to fight before we, we don't even consider. Okay. <laughs> All right. Fine. And again, this, this and it's not personal to any candidate. It's not personal to the ones that aren't here because some of them probably felt that it was a done deal. Unfortunately, that happens. That proved not to be correct tonight. But if people say, well, I never got a call, they, they figured that was a done deal. So, so. I second, second the motion. I know. Uh, do you have any input on this or not? Just well, ask. I, 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 I sat, listened, did my research, and I okay. All right. have my opinion. Mr. Secretary, <clears throat> pull the board. Commissioner Warren. I no no, oh. no this is just this is just this is just us right you still have to give the you have to give the public okay. the opportunity oh I'm oh, sorry it, yes it, you guys okay come up on a on a motion you have to give okay I don't have anything but the way you're saying that we have no no right to speak is totally wrong. I can I can take the heat and I can make mistakes. Chris Grimm, two two three zero North Lehigh Ave. I took offense when you said we do not have the ability to speak. You you I, represent I, us, I, but we I, always we I, as citizens I, I, always I hope, have the I right to speak. Commissioner Snyder. I don't want him to be taking a poll of the public. The, it doesn't and matter. He can do that. He's not, the commissioner, yeah, and we can right. we can answer that. And but again, that, and you think it's good? I, I understand where you're coming from. I'm just and saying. I do, and I apologize if I offended anybody out there. But as I stated before, to me, this probably would have been better if more people would get out on the street and say, "Hey, I'm running for this. These are my qualifications." So when we have something like this occur, we know more about the candidate. Simple I, I as that. I fully understand what you're saying. My point was 
you cannot say that we cannot speak when a motion is made. Okay, and, and That's all I'm saying. You've gone ahead and That's all and I, have. I apologize for that. Okay? No problem. All right. Thank you. Mr. Secretary. Oh, wait a minute. Anybody, Anybody else? Any more, any more out there? Mr. Secretary, please poll the board. Commissioner Warren, aye. Commissioner Snyder? Yes. Commissioner Fox? Yes. President Sloniker? All right. Congratulations, Mr. Pelligian. It was a hard time getting there, but we got there. All right, could you please come up so that Larissa can swear you in? Let's do it like everybody else. Give him the buzzer seat when he gets up here, too. <laughs> Make it so somebody gets like, there. He's taking your picture. Besides getting a two by four and knocking your head and saying, just go for the boat. You remember, you remember the discussion was that we were <laughs> not turning. Not no, no. When yeah. I found out, okay, uh, all, I'm just trying to say, I'm only trying to work with this. We got a three hour Thank limit on it. Nice. What time is it? Be careful if you're driving tomorrow in the bad weather right. and. Happy Valentine's Day to all of you. All hike that snow. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's true. I'm no, sorry. I, you know, You're right. We have our differences. If they start walking out, I'm, no, I'm, saying, I'm befuddled and bemoaning. I know, I know. I was told by uh, one of the commissioners. Do I have a motion for adjournment? I hereby you? make the motion to adjourn. Do I have a second? I'll second. Okay, give it to Liz. Okay. I'm, I'm winded out. Wow, that was pretty good for your first meeting. You didn't even say a word.